you know, I'm proud of that, right? Hey, Lubis, you yes, want to cover Pitt. some of this video? And Dick and Jeffrey, I'm going to play it, and then I want you to stop it where you get some thoughts and ideas. And, um, you know, okay. Because now this is everybody's new uh, fixation. Uh, Andy Tate. Uh, not so much him, but what he's saying, it seems. Uh, well, I like a lot of the things he says, right? I don't know. There's some things I don't resonate with, with, but there's a lot of things that he says that I really, uh, I think he's he's on the ball with sometimes. You know? All right, I'm going to play this. You're into Bugattis, huh, Lou? Bugattis. No, I don't really care about that shit. Give me a nice pickup truck and I'm happy. Well, what part do you like? The part about pimping hoes? No, no. I don't Turns know. out, see, this is see, this is the thing, Freedom Grower. Turns out we all got a wrong narrative, it seems. According to Andy Tate, he don't do sexual content on OnlyFans because it's not only sexual. He does softcore, regular, like Sports Illustrated, classy stuff. That's what I, that's what he says. So, you know, again, we're getting the narrative through the filter through the media that this guy's pimping and hoeing and trafficking. Turns out he's doing very classy and tasteful uh, pimping and macking on the chimpanzees out there, right? Because he knows how to get money through men's emotional weakness and insecurity, paying for imagery, which apparently isn't even naked imagery. It's it's tasteful, according to him. Again, I haven't seen it. I yeah. didn't sign up. I don't really give <clears throat> really give a shit about any of that he he's figured out how to monetize the sim i was just giving lou a hard time i mean he does blend in some things that are real talk but there's a lot of what you said paul too just it's imagery and uh trophies and all this kind of bullshit yeah i mean listen it's like real simple i got five women around me i may not even be you know dealing with them sexually with me and them like maybe we have in the past maybe sometime we do it's irrelevant it's like Okay, you know, I could go to college and be trained to be a slave, right, and pay tax and all that, or I could go this way, be free and empowered, take pictures of my feet, let's say, and make 200000 bucks a year. I mean, you have to, it's an ethics situation. You have to decide for yourself, is that unethical, to take pictures of your feet and let folks pay for it if they want to give their energy and their hard-earned money to look at pictures of your feet, you know, how pious you want to get. Is that a graven image? Is it idol worship? What are we talking about here? So again, it's a spiritual and ethic decision, ethical decision each being would have to come to. But it's far from like, they're not even having sex from what I understand. It's not even any sexual behavior. It's like goofy sort of, you know, roundabout uh -huh. pimping on really, it's the, the pimping that's being done are on the men. Yes, out yes. There who are paying exactly. $6 to look at somebody's feet. If they're into that, nobody's forcing them. It's voluntarism. He's so, monetized the shit. simping. He's figured out how to really mo it. heavily he monetize simping. simping. Just yeah. like I have. That's why I said I'm the viper. If he's Cobra, I must be viper because I monetize simping. You just <laughs> saw what happened over the last week. I got paid to break down the simping uh, covert narcissist who feign as victims but really want to control your emotional state. They're the ones looking for power and control and benefits and privileges. Rest of us are just doing what we're doing and and being consistent and succeeding. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something here. But let's hear a little bit from Andy, everybody's new best friend, uh, everybody's new focus, because he got arrested, of course, and now everybody's got to wonder what's going to happen. I know slaves are deathly afraid of escaping the matrix, thinking for themselves, living for themselves, not following policy and code and other people's orders. So now we all have to wonder what's going to happen, right? Well, I know what's going to happen if you don't live free, how you choose to think and feel, set your own boundaries, choose your own destiny. You're going to be a fucking cat pet slave. So have fun with that in this arena because that's not fun for me. This is a very serious point because the Western world has collapsed in real time and it's a failed society. And I want you to tell me, folks, if you have anything you want me to stop here and comment on, you, you bellow out to me and I'll stop it and you can comment. I'm largely misunderstood. I don't blame women for a lot of the problems. Women are guilty of certain things, but I have a massive amount of blame to place on men because there's so many men who are genuinely incompetent. So I think some of the biggest mistakes men make is listening to girls. Okay. Girls don't know what they want. Girls don't know what they want. Ask a girl what she wants to eat. Yeah. She doesn't know what she wants. She doesn't know what they want with anything. 
men show love primarily through our through our hard work, not just through our resource, but through our hard work. If you take a man who's not particularly rich, he shows his wife love by getting up every day, going to work nine to five, working his ass off and paying those bills. That's how he shows love. That's why he does it. So women need to respect you as a man. How's a woman going to respect you as a man if no other girl wants you? How's a woman going to respect you as a man if you're putting her above all your boys? How's a woman going to respect you as a man if you're not here in the streets making money? How's a woman going to respect you as a man if you don't respect yourself or other men don't respect you? Respect is linked to fear. How is a woman going to respect you as a man if people don't fear you? And I think that your relationship with women as a man is one of the most important things you're going to go through in your life. If you look at a man who's truly content and truly happy, he has a good relationship with women. You, you get that to happen through showing competence. If every single thing in life is a value exchange, every single thing in life, even friendships are a value exchange. You think of who your best friend is, right? You gain something and he gains something through your interaction, right? Either it makes you feel happy or he can help you with some things or you help each other. Every single thing in life is a value exchange. Money. Thomas, come up. I want to hear you. Thomas is typing down there. He's giving his commentary all of a sudden from a chat box. Because that's what we do here, right, I got Tom? a lot to say about this. <clears throat> Well, why haven't you stopped me then? If you're interested. <laughs> well, All I right. asked everyone to stop me um, when they have thoughts and emotions about this. So there's a there's <clears throat> there's a basically a mind control program going on through Joe Rogan and and uh, Jordan Peterson, and it's like the intellectual dark web. It's a psyop, and when uh, these powers that be choose these COINTELPRO limited hangout agents, um, these guys How are can you verify people that anything they you just said? Huh? I, I'm How not can verifying you verify anything. Conclusive? So I can show you. Just... I can show you a bunch of stuff, but or you could just let me get my piece. I'm out, saying, but you, you know, just like laid could, out a whole bunch could, of things like they do to me. I'm an agent. I'm this. I'm yeah. that, and everything. So they're doing that to me now. So now I have to start asking more. How does everyone verify well, who's, who's a they? limited hangout Google style op agent? Well, I, I don't think you would be because you only have twenty thousand followers. Ah, so I once think, I get to two hundred thousand, I'm one. Who has yeah. twenty million followers? They're the thought. The, the thought leaders that they want to control and control with it, the narrative with. So, so, you know, Tate got big through Michaela Peterson who got big through Jordan Peterson who got beat through, you know, like it's, it's this chain and it all ends, you know, with, um, it, it all goes into what I was talking about before the place up in, um, the, the like new Bohemian Grove play, but, but this dude, I could go to Glendale right now and pull like any Persian kid I see out of a Mercedes and put a camera on him for a week and give him some money. And he's going to say what Tate says. Um, his shits. He, he's a regurgitator of information. Um, he's probably semi-intelligent, but I don't think that he's, you know, like it's like once once you get big at all, you can just you're surrounded by people telling you good information to to then you know, repeat to everyone as if it's yours. So, so by and your estimation, this is a man of low yeah. intelligence. Average intelligence, intelligence. Uh, I, don't so. I don't see. I don't see that at yeah, all. I don't see that. You guys that are, are buying into his bullshit. The whole. No, I've heard thing. his conversation with somebody in his back and forth parry, and he wraps somebody up just like I do here. So, if I'm average intelligence, then he is as well. But I'm on paper. We Okay, so we're all saying and we're I would above say average I even have a higher here. intelligence than myself. Maybe we're all average intelligence. Well, that, well, that's a whole other discussion. Because what yeah. I say about well. the past, when they told me I had superior intelligence, I said, did it ever occur to you that I don't have superior intelligence? You all are just so, lacking in intelligence? If, if, no, you if say life anything was a sliding down, curve, everybody he presents goes, himself oh, above you're average. You're no of that. You of know, course it's like the does. perfect I've heard setup, him go back and forth with these folks. Thing. And I, to divide people, uh, when they Jeffrey, pick I notice a pattern with pros, you that everybody's an agent people. and everybody has an agenda and everything has to meet what you say. They the, do. Like in the beginning, the ends have to justify the means, and I don't live like that because I've watched him have a back and forth with Pierce Morgan and other folks, and he lays out exactly li like how I how I do. Bro, you believe his thoughts, emotions, all and that is how not next. scripted? You believe that's not scripted when he how, goes well, on how Pierce do you Morgan? Determine that? You think how they're actually hostile that? towards each other and they aren't just trying to make I didn't say they're news? hostile. I'm saying he wasn't hostile at all. He was very calm and balanced and measured. No, but and he went Pierce. over point by point and he wrapped everyone up by seeing him go against it. Yeah, with absolute objective logic. <laughs> Don't you have to Bro, also you think it's straight down to the ladder? Like they're actually acting? That's what you think? 
Of course. No, I think Tate is acting. I think Peterson is acting. I think they wouldn't get to the place Thank that you, they Thomas. are at without following the agenda. Like, for example, Paul, he fucking, I don't know, inspires so many people. You think he maybe would get an increase in viewers? He's still sitting around 150 to 200. When but you were also, you're, you're avoiding the idea that, like, these folks – invest back into themselves and their team and they have marketers you, promote. you're trolling no, paul come on you're trolling us what this no. dude set up a whole it, system on, this dude set up a you're whole trolling. multi-level marketing system where he had nah, other people paying to promote him to get something back did he how set it up you're the trolling. Well, how did he They're get everybody to post his videos in the tiktoks did he mind control them you know or how? did they all when you got, sign when on you got, to be part of that when you he has to be saying author, something that resonates. When you got that first yeah, they ad offer, they they're going to do this to me. Me. I have they're somewhere they're going to do the same thing to me, Dick. You watch. You watch. That's all right. Sure. Sure. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you. If you get 200,000 subs, does that mean Paul's now an agent or he's. You know, compromise. No, 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 no. You got to see through the lines. You got to listen Andrew, to what the fuck you're saying. Through the lines, man. man. Jordan Peterson is a vision of the country, man. then maybe he is a is an op. Yeah, if if cause no. if Paul's out there causing the vision. Yes, yeah, maybe he is an op. Went on and explained that he the process of getting seven different kind of passports, and you're gonna tell you're me trolling. he's an average intelligence. You're trolling us, dude. I don't believe you. Believe this shit. On what metric does the average intelligence person have seven passports so that? While they put policy on every one of you, he just pulls out a different identity, so he's not subject to the policy. No one said he's he said that. The average dumbass. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he said no that said because he understands yeah, he the law. Yeah. I don't oh think my god. Know. I think he. Uh, uh, Man, you guys are really hating. You don't want to give anybody any kind of play at all. You don't want to give anybody any kind of shine and respect and play at all. Anybody who gets more pussy and money than you motherfuckers, you want to hate on him. It's fucking crazy to me. I'm not hating on him. I told you I like completely ignore everything they do and say because of what they have you don't got. Is what I see. I like a lot of the things he says. I'm not hating on the guy. No, that's the whole point. He says a bunch of shit that's great, so you so you like him, and then every once in a while, that's why these guys exist. Every once in a while, they feed you some serious fucking bullshit, and you believe it because you're all, oh, Tate's great. He'd never lie to me. Like, nah, dude, you didn't, didn't hear me, bro. No, you didn't hear no. me. You guys are all invested in this dude's background and when how he got I've there never, and who he is. I've never, I'm telling you, you just I'm me playing more clips of what he's ever seen in my life. You just showed I'm, me more Tate than I've ever seen in my life. And it so was then all how'd you make a like determination on what he yeah, does? Exactly. Average, average shit. The same average way you can make, you make a determination, on, determination on him having average seconds. intelligence in 30 seconds is more than you ever listen. You're biased then. The dude's no. a fucking... You have to listen a little bit to what he's saying. That's what, see, he just did yeah, it. Jeffrey, you might have to go over to Moose's channel, man. There's a new space over there. For player haters, if you want to go over there. No. Because you can't hating. tell me you didn't listen to more than 30 seconds of the dude, but know that he ain't smart. You're muted, Jeff. It ain't Jeff. hating. It, yeah, it you're ain't muted, hating. You're a like, hater you too, Thomas. To him, yeah, you are. Whatever. But if you listen to him, I've listened to maybe five or ten minutes of his shit. Jeffrey and you just, just leave. That's all you more. need. It's like you, you can muted. see it's the character. Picture. Like, people are allowed to make mistakes. It doesn't matter where he came from. It matters what he's doing now. People are allowed to make mistakes, so you look at the character, and when you see certain flaws, okay, do these flaws, are they regular personal flaws, or are these seriously uh, flaws that counter are counterintuitive to their message? What are the flaws you see with Tate, uh, Thomas? Uh, he's... I mean, I don't know. We could just play him for 30 there seconds. There you go, Don. Stop, I mean, right yeah, stop, right stop right there. Stop right there. Because I'm a pothead and I can't right remember there. it right now. Stop right there. Sir, if you went and Florida just said what these all just here. said, I got to cut you down and make it interesting now, Tom. I, I apologize. If you just went to court and did what you just there, your bad faith, throw him out. Out. You just said you, you you sounded like a woman who who lived with him for six up. months and know all the bad things about him. And when we asked you all the bad things, oh I'm oh what, I don't know. I don't listen to him for yeah. long enough. Because none of you motherfuckers know nothing. My You're mind controlled so about it, all the people who told you how, to hate him. Just like all them chicks on the campuses. They walk up and put a microphone in every leftist girl's face. We don't like Andrew Tate. Why? Uh, 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 they don't know why they were told not to like him. I know, they were yeah. told I told he's an agent. The same thing they would do to me. 
No, we don't. Okay. All don't right. talk it's over me. Simple. I talk over you here because I'm a narcissist. The same way, Please. That's the, the new same way. All right. Yes. And I try not to do that. I promise. But the <laughs> same way you can see through fucking Talcott or you can see through Harlem, you can see through me in fucking two minutes. It's the same way you should be able to see through this fuck. I didn't ask you that. I said, what is he talking about? What is the content of what he's speaking about? And how does it relate to us? He, why is everyone up in arms about yeah, what he's he saying? Not who he is, what, he what he's relates. saying. 50% of what he says in. relates. The other 50% is in counterintuitiveness. <laughs> yeah, but you'll never, you folks will never be able to point me to where it is. Except in your feet. Sure I will. Put him on for fucking 30 seconds. The okay, reason well that's what I was doing. Was fuck not. Yeah, that's what I was doing. And I what typed what the fuck I said. That shit is warped. And you what said you come up, and I did, and I already forgot because I smoked too much goddamn weed, sir. I'm smoking it now. Andrew oh. Tate doesn't do that. I watched him play chess against Pierce Morgan, and he told him I'm a checkmate you in five moods and did it. Yeah, Pierce Morgan. Oh, so Andrew he's Tate smart. don't forget mm -hmm. what he just said five minutes ago, like the moose and the rest of them, and I don't either. With ten blunts in me, so stop blaming the weed, motherfucker. Maybe you're just right. incompetent, That's, like he was just saying on the video. The Let's case. get back. It could to be it. the case. Maybe I just don't care enough about he, the man to remember well, anything. Well, the man's very, very humble. Then why have an opinion? Make men. Mm -hmm. And this has been proven to me endless times. I've seen so many crypto guys who make a bunch of money or daddy's boys who have a bunch of money, but there is nothing admirable about these people. Me, my life feels fun now because of all the acceleration to get here. And I can remember the times when I was stuck by the side of the motorway without a car. So I, I, I have that juxtaposition. Without that, it's not even... It's not even interesting. It's not even fun. So the brokey days, anyone who's out here who's broke, good. You're gonna be these will be the happiest days of your life once you made it. If you're a person who is miserable and depressive all the time when you're broke, and, and this is also damn, cut up, so we're not listening to him speak. Rich, guess what? We're listening to someone's the money is nothing compilation. but amplifier. It will amplify everything about you. So a lot of them, the male instinct to conquer earth is financial. I think this is why men work so hard. This is why men are so obsessed with money. Or they should be. They absolutely yeah. should be obsessed with money. It would be my duty to be out here, traveling the world, making money, having impact, being a fantastic individual. That is the primary focus of my existence. As yeah, I don't agree with that. Men should definitely day. not be obsessed with money. That's a terrible imbalance. You should be obsessed you with your life world. purpose and your passion. I, I don't agree with that either. I like. I, I mean, like that's the thing, thing about him. He says ten true things and comes back with three fucking warped ass ideas. Exactly. What yeah, I but said. You, have have you have to have discernment. We all you talk have have one at a time, or is there a reason we're all talking over each other? Is that what what table? Happened? We just all talk at once, huh? You have to have discernment, right? And you have to make a decision what you believe is honorable and what you believe is not so honorable i don't believe the the love of money like he says and you have to money has he to didn't be say love money. he said be obsessed no, no. with it but we didn't hear the context and what yeah. he meant by that like thomas obsessed. said they clipped that and that was one little tiny piece we didn't hear before or after what he meant by that i wasn't but i don't agree with being obsessed with money either well but, he might but that's be the point. To the idea of money being one of the indicators or value that will be an amplifier of what you've created an individual's so, obsession is that of his own, though. Well, I agree with what Dick said. See, I would personally, what I've observed in self is I'm more obsessed with my purpose and the inspiration I get from what I create and where that goes. And then the money is just a, a, a representation of the value that's within that, right? It's right. value for value, you know? Um, but again, that was a little bit, you know, out of context. And I don't know what he meant by that. And it's not a statement I would make. I'll tell you that. That man right, should be obsessed with money. I wouldn't make that statement probably any his, time in my life, really. <laughs> isn't that his choice, though? Right. And when you listen to it's him more, a, you'll notice that shit pops that, up more. It's not some reason to hate him because he 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 worships money and we worship God. Ain't a reason to hate him. Well, I don't hate him. I think he says a lot of No, but again, you don't know what he I meant by that. Fucking, right. Yeah, I don't. I don't. But the thing oh. is, he says a lot of things. I'm like, damn, I got to know context because that sounds yeah. retarded. You know, I, I had to have that talk, talk with my son about this particular subject where my son, I saw him getting a little bit too obsessed with money and he started to see, uh, it seemed to me that he was seeing the only value in him was how much money he could make. And I, I really had to sit down and talk to him, you know, like this isn't, you know, yeah, make money. That's great. You know, 
you got to make some money and you got to try and do well, but you can't be obsessed with it. You can't make it your whole life. You can't make yeah, it. But, you can't but give cool. it so much value that you lose yourself in the process. That's yeah, but I it's do. also good why gold is a representation of value because it's an actual thing that can be used. It is valuable. Because you could, yeah. because you, Able to yeah, be it's you. called a ballast. It's called a ballast, it's so called, you can't fucking... The tangibility you can, you doesn't can, fucking matter in 2023, bro. So what I'm saying yeah. is, when, we, when we're talking about we become the gold, and we're the value in relationships, we're the value to women, it doesn't matter what we buy them, we're the value. So, like, yeah, that's the thing, like, and the value of our life and our purpose and everything. I know, I know I'm saying stuff, but it's easier said than done, but, like... So um, you, you want to be good for women instead of yourself, O'Shea? <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm the value. So, like, like Paul was saying, what are you going to buy? You're or the, how you, for women, what are you gonna but not for yourself. That was very <laughs> profound. What O'Shea said, though, I, I like that. Yeah, what oh, are you I mean, saying? he is Tom? right. But are you in the room with us? I don't know. I don't think you're in the room with us. All right, all right. Well, I thought I was. He's saying he you're said, you the, value. the value. You're the value as opposed to money for women. For women, he had to. Anyway, I'm. I thought I was Dude, talking about I wanted Brian O'Shea to be Thomas. good for himself as opposed to Thomas, Thomas, some keep pussy. talking, please. It's what amazing, I'm saying is, it really is. We're it's like, let's say, making sense. This is why folks don't like Andrew Tate because they know inherently, intuitively, oh, he wouldn't get break, in the room dude. with him and stay in the room with him. You don't, he wouldn't. you can't, he you wouldn't. Don't just like I wouldn't. And you're going to go to labeling me an agent and narcissist one day. So I'm aligning with him now. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. You're going to do it to me anyway. Because I don't want to uh, be in the room with most of you. And I know I'm a narcissist. You're my and I'm behavior, an agent. Mrs. Mr. Fallacy guy. Uh, like, no, 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 you're most presuming folks my can't behavior. Keep up, man. They're incompetent. He just told you. He just told you. And he brought 100 people on from the public and showed you each day how they're all incompetent and don't know who and what they are and where their power is. I have Just no like idea I what you're talking about. Of course, because you didn't look into it. I did. Yeah. You know, the point, <laughs> and, and before it was Milo <laughs> Yiannopoulos, and before it was, you know, it's like, it's all these guys. And they all end up being the same type of plant disinformation artist in the end and he's just the flavor of the week if you can't see that as a clear two-party paradigm thing going on what proof like, do you have he's, like they pick these guys None. they don't make these dudes famous for no reason like they make There's too them, many people with famous. talent like youtube will not like like it's it's so clear that these guys are disinfo agents and it's just super shocking but what is he saying? I, I, <laughs> girl said, I, I, girl said, I need a strong man out. to lean on. No. On anyone, let alone <laughs> no. this guy. But what is he I saying? I don't even, that's... I'm just, I'm really just, just trying to, to get I'm people confused. a little bit riled up because I really don't need well, to that's be what in, it on seems a planet. Like you're doing. That's what well, a little bit, like but doing. there's some truth to it. Right there's now. some truth to it. I don't need to be on a plane with Andrew Tate or any uh, other I man. Said there I don't was even need to be on a plane, to be honest with you. I said was 100% inaccurate. I'm saying 80% of what he says you'll agree with, and then every once in a while he'll slip something really important in that's pure disinformation. It's it's how you sway the masses on uh, it, politically and psychology the same way they've been doing yes. it for hundreds of years with propaganda. So what's the example Kennedy. of that? And specifically it's with this discernment. Man. All right, he talks about all types of shit. You, you got to be about truth. You got to be about strength, and you also got to obsess about fiat. Yeah, but you don't so know. Because he personally he has a point of view, he's Lambo now invalidated on all the other information the he speaks. They did that to me yesterday. Yeah, Pure you'll do it to statism, me. I'll wait for it. You're going to do it to me. I know you are. Because they just did it to me Paul, yesterday. No, Paul. If we catch him one time saying something we don't agree with, that no. invalidates everything he said before. No, now. that's not one time. He, like, like Jeffrey that, just said, one out of every me. five times, 20% of the time, he's throwing out the bullshit. If... If every five times you don't even listen to him one of them was bullshit, minutes. Paul, I would never look at your fucking player page again. We got a new throw player out hater, so Bob. much truth. You throw <laughs> out so much truth hater, listen to a man. that I know that you're not fucking hey, Andy, bought out. I didn't at least start yet. this, bro. I'm like the moose now. Andy, I didn't start this, bro. I didn't Can start put this. energy I'm not where it matters. This. They're doing this. Uh, it's funny because this is like I was in family court last couple of years, and my my judge would like fuck with me to get me riled up so I'd say stuff, you know, or or to like test me to see how my temper was. And I feel like that's what Paul's doing. He's just trying yeah, to get I, us riled I, up. I, yeah, I've, I've, I, I've, I don't think I've, he actually is fanboying on Tate like he's saying he is. Yeah, I don't, I, I, don't really, I didn't say I was fanboying. You felt that. You got a little bit disappointed in me because you felt I was fanboying. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. 
asking some questions and I'm pointing to some narratives and I'm wondering how long it's going to take and how many subscribers and how much success before I become an operative and agent and everything I said and done before that is invalidated. If the, I want to know when that's going to happen. Really what I see from this started. last week has taught me a lot. So now I'm wondering about a lot of stuff. If the mainstream news reports on you every single day and you're causing ah. massive division, like then I absolutely, you're a fucking right, right. But so that's all they have to do, do to get all you conspiracy cards. All you spiracy tards, all they have to do to get you to buy it by is just put coverage on me. So if I walk out of my trailer and they're out there taking pictures, Paul, he's an agent. I could be no. sitting there yelling at him like Kanye, bitch smacking that. him. Look, look at Paulie. He's doing TMC acting out that. there as I'm bitch smacking cameras. Right? The agents don't even know so they're we're agents. we're agents now because they're covering us. That's great. I love that. Tell me more, man. No, I want to know. You... I want to know for later when everyone goes to do me dirty like they're already starting to do now. Oh, when don't they I hear that. A little bit of, right? don't be the I want to know when this really gets to where it's going, what it's going to look like and why it happened. So this is good. Dude. Don't don't do that. Don't be in a beta. I heard they're training in a beta. They're training in a beta mind phase, so you can't even. You don't. They don't even know they're fucking agents. <laughs> yeah, but you know how the people that are agents don't know they're agents. They That's just what I'm saying. Paid to yeah. say when you talk about something, all of a sudden they have a big YouTube. They don't know. Pro jab, whatever. They, yeah, not trying to interrupt. Bottom line is, but what Paul's teaching is what we need to be focusing on because it's all about being righteous. And, and, and changing each other and learning about each other, learn about yourself, bro. And all this other nonsense that it, it don't matter, bro. It's all about yourself and, and getting right with yourself. Fuck all the right, dude I'll over there. Deal. If you start seeing me doing all this business, then you gotta. <laughs> you just did Someone it, Paul. Lost. They they got, they're gonna <laughs> clip that it. out. I don't care what they clip. They'll always clip out of context, but there's hey, context. And you got a black eye, Paul. But and I'm saying, black... like, if they go to arresting me, and I'm like. <laughs> you know, like you might something might be up they got they got him they got him doing a couple of that paul i can't say i can't you know so it's confusing to me because andrew tate does say a lot of righteous ass shit but then you know he, he's a he's a he went muslim now he's a he's a reverted a muslim too so i mean yeah, I they say i'm a muslim because i'm calling folk <laughs> infidels and saying they should be banking I don't mind Muslims. Muslims are, are awesome people. I don't, I'm not anything of this world, so I can't claim anything of it. Wasn't he always a Muslim? <laughs> no, he he no, he just converted. No, he just converted. Yeah, he converted like or reverted? Because reverted would, would lend to that he was always a Muslim until he wasn't. Now he is again. Yeah, no, just, just to ruffle some feathers, just to get some people to hate him a little bit more. It's like the perfect no, narrative. It's... Just cause the most... Let's let's make the this guy that's gonna drive everyone fucking crazy and then then make him famous by reporting on him twenty four seven. Ridiculous. Well, are, are we gonna are we gonna talk about his premises or just his personality? Yeah. No, no, we're talking that's about the that everybody is no, focused on. Look like how triggered everybody is. What spiritual like, outlet like, person we should actually listen this to? This sounds a lot oh. like that panel about me yesterday, and I suspect oh, when I get another goodness. twenty thousand subscribers, if YouTube and Google it's a false let me comparison, dude. <laughs> Get ready for no, it, Paul. This, Paul, is, this is what awaits you. Jeffrey's going to be right there, man. Paul, uh, I don't know. Like, like, some shit about to to show that your guilty you might sell out? <laughs> I see, Paul. Not he walked like out the trailer and there was, there, was, there, was <laughs> coverage. there was coverage all around him. They were doing a lot of reporting on him. People are triggered. I don't know. It's like Bo Shaney's going to say, where, where did that trailer come from? Who's behind him? Who's behind, behind all the empire? Who's behind, who behind the empire? Who made the thumbnails? All right, I got a question for everyone here. Who's Somebody's making the gotta... thumbnails? Somebody's got to be behind him, man. Well, now, Who's behind the out. empire? You done know, said it. These are such loser failures. They can't imagine one man generating so much power and wealth and and. And even a trailer gets him uppity, right? This is like, imagine a Bugatti in a plane. It's over. It's over. That's why I would never do that because I wouldn't feel comfortable with that, to be honest. Now, maybe if, like, I did a university and, like, we did some good redeemable works here and did some, you know, whatever. We did the right thing. We went the right way. We served something beyond ourselves. Then I go get a plane and a Bugatti. When we serve, you know, the right things and do what's right and we fix things. Then we do plane and Bugatti. But as soon as I buy plane and Bugatti, the university and all the children and all the life save, fuck that. He's invalidated, right? Because they want to hate on what the motherfucker has and how he presents. But they're not talking about what he's saying and what he's doing. 
Just the right? Bugatti. And, and it seems it. most folks don't know much of what anybody's like talking about or what they're doing. They just go to focusing on how they feel about the man's presentment or what he has. What are you even with. talking about? What am I even talking about? What the fuck Andrew are you Tate? ever talking about? Yeah. We were fuck trying to present that Andrew Tate's up. message is what yeah. yeah. Andrew and Tate mentioned the juxtaposition. Uh, Nothing about his personality. It's his uh, message. <laughs> okay. What are you talking about, right? Right? Paul ben Stein is his name. The clear eyes guy. Tate, okay, Tate mentioned it a little more. Tate Sorry. mentioned a particular juxtaposition, if you noticed. Uh, he mentioned about where he came from and to where he is now and that recognizing that that difference that it gave him a different discernment of, uh, of yes. uh, wealth and such. And then he went on talking about money and such, saying that, you know, I think we're kind of taking it out of the wrong context. I think if you listen to it again, he was actually saying different stuff. I didn't quite get it all clear, but I think he wasn't saying that you're supposed to be lusting after money. He was saying that money is a way of measuring the amount of success or power yeah, that I'm you're sure generating. Is, that's a war that you, Marlo, up there in the, yeah, He that's said a man should Marlo be obsessed with corner. money. Yeah, he said he should right. be obsessed with money. Yeah. It's like Drake with his fucking music producer dad made a song that said, started from the bottom, now I'm here. Bitch, you started from the top. Now you're above <laughs> almost every other record maker. <laughs> started from the top, now I'm here still. <laughs> <laughs> right. I guess that song didn't really, really done as well, right? Started from the top, still here. <laughs> that wasn't done as well. Damn right. it, Thomas! Like, no, I say TV manage your money. money. Don't and be obsessed. But I don't have a Bugatti, so you know, <laughs> I can't really talk. I don't know, you don't man. Like I, I've thought about that. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? When it goes to like fourteen twenty eight cars, I start to question. It's like well, dudes who tell me they've been with a thousand women. I go, you know. I get your enthusiasm and, you know, your pension for wanting novelty, like exciting new things, but thousands of women, I don't know. Maybe that's a bit much. It might be an indicator of something else going on there. Yeah, it might be, but maybe perhaps, Paul, do you ever think that, that maybe they're holding him in trust as like a de facto museum for maybe private collectors that just want to have a, a safe place to put them so the women themselves them. they're holding them in a museum for collectors no, no, the the no, no, but the, the no. celebrity i was gonna say is there a museum a i'm not aware of sir <laughs> he becomes a trustee for these collectors because they know he's not a bonehead he's in the public eye they could trust him with their collections but they're really trying to preserve it for posterity and they don't really trust the you know the the slaves around those kind of relics of, of you know what uh, you just made me think of what? A strip club is actually a museum for women. Think about that. <laughs> Think about that. They have them in Amsterdam. <laughs> they could be tax shelters too. The the cars, the you know, the planes, all that. They're you know, they're all tax shelters, right? Or you got to think it? though, even like horse racing, you know, and it was uh you know more more prevalent than now because of all the you know the slots because I guess they discovered a slot machine in Indian burial grounds here in Florida. So now they're have able to have uh, slot machines in the casinos. And uh, before we had horse tracks. And, and I mean, whether you gambled or not, I'm not into gambling, but you, know, you could bring your family out to a horse track that have uh, concerts and you see the pageantry of the horse. You had horse breeders, you have the horse, the, you know, the husbandry, a whole industry of people that take care of these animals. And I mean, they're pretty well taken care of for whatever people want to say. So that industry is pretty much gone now. But it was just a, uh, you know, the way you look at things in in, uh, in a historical context, they, they change to what you see them as today. You know, a strip club is just a medium. That is literally an advertisement place for prostitutes. Almost 99% of all strippers are, are prostitutes. And you go there for them to advertise for you to later in the night buy drugs and sex from them. Everything, man. This no. is why no one oh, wants you around, so. man. Captain Obby is here. Did you guys know? Strippers now we know what actually... Thomas does with his spare time, huh? <laughs> Thomas, the... I've been to a strip club twice. <laughs> in my life. And both Did times you guys before. know that rappers maybe sometimes don't just rap? No, because you said they're like a Did museum. Did you know for that women. there's yeah, more on the tour bus close. than just rhymes? Because they're going around to stay. Oh, let me not let you in on that. That might even be more exclusive. No, it's just right? super obvious. It's been in pop culture forever. I'm like trying to lay down what, like, has already been laid down. 
Obviously, <laughs> it's obvious, but you're talking about it like uh, it's Here's a museum the for women. Nah, it's, Here's uh, a it's a museum for a goddamn <laughs> red light. Yes, Thomas, we're aware that uh, the strip club is a foray into other underworld activities. Illicit activities. No, it's, it is. It ain't just a foray. It is literally the marketplace. <laughs> well, so much for the, the family themes, Paul, with the, the horses and everything. And the, and the <laughs> hey, Thomas, if I'm going to hate you this right much. to the dregs of society, it's... Thomas. Thanks. <laughs> O'Shea, please. O'Shea, you're this the quietest comedian I've here. ever met. Quietest what? The quietest comedian I've ever met. Yeah, sure. well, he's a. He, the thing is, is he's an expert in silent comedy, right? Yeah, and, and that's the thing. It's, Internal it's, comedy. Yeah, he's he's, he's tired. He's behind in the time. Is what it is. Some we're, folks are born ahead of the time. He's born behind his time. He's an expert in silent comedy, like the great Stone Face. He's been moving couches and fridges all day. He's tired. He doesn't yeah. Buster O'Shea. What, you working for a moving Buster company? O'Shea? No, he's working TaskRabbit. I don't even know what the fuck that is. It's like uh, it's like Uber for like many like jobs, like day long jobs or like couple hour jobs. Like ladies will want you to like put up paintings oh, on the man. wall or Ryan something O'Shea. being a TV. That's the fucking oh, job for you, man. What? So you That's mean a job for you, because next thing you know, you're in the house with some housewife who's divorced. Yeah. And you get hey. to get her in on how you're retaining right. while you're putting up pictures. <laughs> Is there anything else I can help you with around here, ma'am? <laughs> and she's got the ex's money, too. The ex's right. Y'all money. ever want to move? A Ginzo way. would start counting her money before you even had sex with her, Lou. You are a <laughs> typical Canadian-Italian, Lou. <laughs> Well, yeah, cheap Italians, miserly. These folks. I thought you were moving shit, uh, O'Shea. Isn't that what you're doing? Moving stuff. <laughs> Lou's the only guy in a woman with a in a room with an attractive woman worried about trying to get to her pocketbook rather than in her pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you start moving Lou, stuff, Lou. And then Lou, like... I thought you, Lou. I thought that you did well for yourself, man. You say you grow you self sustainable up there. What do you? What do you need the ex's money right. for? What are you trying to buy? I said for O'Shea. For O'Shea. Oh, for O'Shea. For O'Shea. I don't need so you're encouraging him to do shit you wouldn't do? Well, I just figure, you know, since he's going to be there, we might as well use a little bit of cash, too, you know? You ain't right, Lou. <laughs> you ain't right for all that. I know. It's like my family, my older brothers. It's all they do is try to, yeah, get a girl with some money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? You motherfuckers are desperate, huh? Well, those That's old really need sad. someone to pay for their really gas. Sad for a man to be looking for a woman with money? What the oh. fuck? It's bad enough yeah. for a woman to be looking for a man who got money. Now we got men out here looking for the women with money. Wow. That's Come crazy. from a <laughs> I don't know. Well, We're I guess done, I'm man. Uh, this race is done. It's Count done. Out. It's over. <laughs> they're they're legitimately looking for mamas now. Not only do they want to be controlled by policy and code and emotions, they want to be provided for. That's great. Hey, Paul, you never answer my question about what you think about the word "cuck" and how it's you know, <laughs> how it's used these days and who it's used by. Yeah, oh, good question, Jeffrey. Great question, what's, Jeffrey. Hi, Alex. Why is that so important to you, uh, Jeffrey? Yeah, what, where huh? are you going with that? It's just well, always been a funny word to me that it's been used and and who it's been used by in popular culture and shit. And uh, we'll get down to it. You just did it twice. Person. Who has it been used by? Don't talk in riddles. Oh, it's like redditors know. and shit. Like incel redditors live like basement dwellers and shit. Hey, bigger well, like, right when when did it originate? Huh? When did you first hear about it? It became popular again on the website Reddit. When? When? What date? Know. What year? Why? I don't know. Well, not, not the 80s, like not recently. the 70s. No, recently. Reddit did not exist in the 80s. Right, so it's a new term. Is what I'm these trying to get at. Sure, oh, these are insecure old term. soy boys. I'm not just like swag term. is an old term that popped up. I'm in the saying the new, new version again. of how You don't really like, love what? yourself or your woman if you haven't imagined her getting um, copulated on by another man. Okay. What? If you haven't imagined that, you have insecurities. I'm just going to put it out there right now. Yeah, I said it. Look, Jeffrey's shocked. Huh? He's never had that. He's, he's trying his best to stop that from ever happening. Not only does he not what? fantasize about that, he's, he's desperately clinging on to Annie, trying to stop her from copulating with another man, even though she's desperately trying to. 
I am the opposite. I have the opposite approach. Okay. I'm not like most of the dudes you have on this show, Paulie. All right. So what right do you have Jen with the fuck right, right now? All right. I don't mind. You don't mind. Jeffrey, like, Jeffrey's I don't getting know. a little nervous. Maybe I he's extend a the same excited. kind of freedom that I want. Same kind of freedom right, I well, want. Yeah. I extend that. I'm not controlling I, you. Know. I, Dominated. I have bad dreams about like uh but the difference is she that... would never want to have sex with Brian O'Shea instead of me, so I have nothing to worry about, even if I was worried. Yeah, dude. no offense, Brian O'Shea. So would y'all communicate that with each other before it happened? Or y'all just like whatever happens, happens. No, I, I think it's this... like it's a conversation. What are you into? What like let's get down to it, let's get to the real deal. I'm not interested well, yeah. in playing in, games. In yeah, Jeffrey. Let's if she's into God. dick banging what? her. You know, what? dare I use that term? Very rude and crude and lewd. I'm married. But if that's what she's <laughs> into, you know, I have to leave space for that. I might I'm not want to be there and be a part of it. Hell no. Um, I'm but then in that case, I just don't deal with it. If it's such a big issue, then I just don't deal with her. But I'm not going to stop Paul, her. Do you ever shut up for F once in your life? No, I don't. It's my broadcast. Lou, you want to get thrown out of here? You just ask me my oh. opinion, not yours. He can't get a word in edgewise. Still want your opinion. That means I hadn't talked enough because yeah, I never told him what he wanted. Okay. How dare you? Lou. Let me see you your disgusting face. Shut up, here Shut up, up Thomas. Right now. Let me look at your disgusting Shut up, face. Lou Bass. And likeness from the side. Propped up there on your bed. Lou. Oh my god. Lou, I want to hear Paul, not you. Could you Lou imagine? <laughs> could you imagine Mrs. Lou Bass? Coming in to see that. <laughs> walks in, walks in the room to see that. The right. smell of re starts rethinking her whole life. Let me, let me, let me, let me how did I get here? How did I get here? What about this? How, how about this? Let's do Yeah, well, that's better, man. That's better. I told you on the side, you got I mean, sort of a, a, a Reynolds vibe a to you, right? <laughs> if you go you, neck, neck up, right? Chest up. But you when you have the stomach hanging out, why is someone talking constantly while I'm talking? I could talk as much as I want. You talk as much as I let you. They still don't understand this, Dick. Can you help someone out here explain to them how rude and verbose and egotistical and narcissistic I am? Please. Yeah, you don't even know. <laughs> you don't know. extremely rude, uh, verbose, and narcissistic. And uh, it's unexplainable he likes it that how. Way. Yeah. Great so job, John. Thing. Thomas seems to still think six months in that he's interesting and clever and funny and poignant. Shut he's none of those things. Up, he's not even well spoken. You shut the, the fuck up. How fuck. dare you speak? And over O'Shea, me, man, I'll fucking throat fuck you and I'll come Whoa. too fast. Well, oh, hey, Paul, th this is why we don't have. I gotta bodies. cut this off. I gotta cut that off. See, this is the kind of stuff that I don't need here: sexual harassment. <laughs> that was sex. Yeah, that was sexual assault, bro. Yeah, it was over the time. <laughs> it was assault. Go ahead, Mr. Trump. I was saying something, Thomas. Please pipe down. Do do us all a favor. <laughs> this is why we don't have Bugattis. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Who would let Thomas into their Bugatti? Who? No one. Who's no gonna one. even I let him anywhere near it, let alone in it? Everything or in store life. it for them in his museum. No way. No way. That's right. Thomas isn't even competent to, to store the Bugatti, let alone be in it around it he couldn't even be one of the, the oh, part-time workers to just keep an eye on he wound up getting high and fall asleep someone steals to bugatti and then he says Kelly fuck Gino that guy is bugatti anyway he's an asshole that would be thomas let me see you Sir. get on camera i'm sick of you folks hiding up here yeah i'm not trying to hide i'm doing chores and i'm not in a good place to be like i'm not holding my phone when i'm doing my chores what kind of chores are you up to Dishes. <laughs> Why was that so funny? <laughs> and just the way he said it. I don't know. Just the way he me a, just his whole affect. Make me a sandwich. <laughs> make you a sandwich, bro. Make me a fucking place to set this potato sack, you fucking retard. <laughs> Uh, Thomas, no R word. You know better. No, nah, I can say it. I'm dumb. I'm slow. I can say it. That's right. That's right. It's like the F word for the homosexual. He is the one. Yeah. yeah right. If I'm one, I can say it. No. Right. Yeah. That's right. good. There's rules to this. 
God. <laughs> <sighs> Back to Andy Tater, what? No. Yeah, <laughs> Jeffrey can't. No, Jeffrey okay. can't handle it. He's getting too emotional. Let's hear a little more. Hey, Him and Thomas. Jeffrey. You All the folks with ponytails are getting triggered for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> so, so, let's so talk about the talk. <laughs> don't like bald guys. <laughs> All the folks yeah. with man buns are very emotional right now, Randy. He's very Harry bald, phallic no symbol, shined up. You know, they're very sort of, they don't know whether to jump on him or run away. You know? He does have a little head, heel power uh, vibe to him, that uh, Andrew Tate fella. Yeah, he does. Heel power? No. Yeah, no, uh, activation. All. Yeah, he, he, it's recently. Yeah, check it out. All right, great. Back to it, no, Jeffrey. You can't handle it. Yes. Uh, whatever. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll just be rolling my eyes. Probably. And if you're going to be the guy and you're going to allow life to happen to you, and you're not going to happen to life, then you're at mercy of the wind. Perhaps it might work out okay, but it might not. Right? And you are at home competing against me, and you want to watch a movie tonight, and then say you're not lazy. You're lazy. You need to, as a man, adopt the mindset that absolutely everything that happens to you is completely and utterly your fault, whether it's good or bad. Mm -hmm. There's no yeah, joy like without that. pain. There's no sunshine without rain. Oh, you like that? Do you like that, Dick, or you don't? It's so obvious. I like come that. On. That's good stuff right there. Oh, Are you being flippant or what? No, Jesus everything Christ in life guys. that happens to you is your fault. You got to take 100% accountability. You, like, come you to put yourself in the position, like you got to own it. Or something, oh, man, like. Dick, if you're being serious right now, he's getting even yeah. more triggered. He can't believe I'm you won't make them. 100% serious. So you What's won't wrong with that? <laughs> you won't oh, trauma bond What is wrong with that? No, I like you the You want to be a victim to your life? Everything that happens to you is somebody else's fault? It's all the... Thankful for everything I'm on Blame the universe. Blame the squirrels. Blame everybody else but yourself. It's you put yourself the creator. Situation. He says it's everything all the 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 righties complain about. I mean the the yeah lefties complain about. It's like it's all just the same obvious stuff. Like oh, <laughs> you know, all the mainstream fucking everything. He even he even brought Greta back into the mainstream. Like good job, douchebag. Jeff, <laughs> you know, right now and say that nine eleven was all my fault, and I want to take. You full. booked the plane ticket, you know, or you took the secretary too, and, and you Greta's had a another CIA off. I could just see Dick on that plane. You know, this was all my fault. All the same, all the same idiots. My bad. All the same psyops playing no, with but that's where, you know, everyone ruffled up. You got to tackle that guy with the box cutter and take him down because so you none put of yourself us get in a shitty, shitty all, situation. All, you got to dig yourself out of that hole. We all separate off of, off, off of social media platforms, Twitter. Oh, all this is going to get you triggered, Jeff. Jeff, 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 Jeff. The more that Andy talks, the more your neck starts doing one His of these. His girl must love Andy. That gets Kate. me worried. When I start seeing the neck cocking, you know it. I, I, I got to call it when I see it. When I see cock necking, I get worried. Brian <laughs> wants to see it in there. Brian O'Shea wants, wants to see more. Brian O'Shea wants to see more. He's taking notes. He knows this say, is uh, where are you right now? Oh, I'm outside the I'm parked next to the law library, believe it or not, on the street here. All right. I was in there earlier, but now it's fucking dark out. I got the fucking brightness on my phone up. Now, where's Allie at, Jeffrey? God damn it. Where's Allie? Where? She's yeah. working. Where does she work at? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what type of work is it? She's a bar gold thing. Moose belt. <laughs> she do manscaping, homeboy. Those facials and shit to old rich ladies. Why was she getting paid for that? Huh? <laughs> Thomas. Come on, Thomas. That's not funny. Don't that encourage is. me. Don't that was just. Me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mathematician, just leave it at that. That's that not what he said. I, I used to be with an esthetician. She used to do manscaping and shit. Oh uh, yeah, that uh, my kid's mom has like a a waxing salon, and she has to do all kinds of fucking gross shit. And I'm like, you are crazy. Like, uh -uh. Hey, can we get the address to her work? <laughs> Big old fat man's buttholes and shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, asking, 
We're it's called a Manzillion. It's like a Brazilian. Oh, uh, come on. I know about that. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be back, 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 back every once in a while. All right, back to how Andy. He I want to see you cock neck, so I might play it while you watch him to get to watch you get triggered. You need up and down. This is how the world works. <laughs> Look, you want your name to matter, then you have to go make it matter. Don't so matter by default. For the longest <laughs> period of human time, for a man to be respected, for him to even be admired by society on any level, to some degree, he had to be a warrior. That's what he did in the fall. So if you're out here as a man... Oh, Jeffrey's no laughing. <laughs> Jeffrey's laughing. Now yeah. I heard him. In order to be a man, you have to kill people. No. No, What's you see that? He's not a warrior. <laughs> yeah, a warrior. <laughs> No, 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 I a good it. man who's ready to go to war for what's it's right. It's the old false mean. stereotype that a man is someone who goes off to war. And that's Jeff, you're, a no. for, you're a warrior not, too for what we're yeah, fighting for. Status, statist fucking patriot bullshit. Blind no, no, Jeff, no, You don't consider yourself no, a warrior, no, Jeffrey? Am I the only fucking non-statist up here, you guys? Like, do you not consider yourself a soldier? You carry a gun around a locked purse. He never <laughs> said he's he a him. How dare you? <laughs> it's true. I'll pull 10 guns up on the stream and get banned right now. No lock purse. <laughs> I don't need I don't you even to do that. A lock purse. I wouldn't even own it, let alone put my gun in there. Do you have a sock derringer? Because if not, no battle in your life, no conquest in your life, no form of war in your life. Well, what you do? And it doesn't have to be physical. Physical is the best example. Yeah, you're, Every woman wants a boxer. See, there you go, Jeff. And if you have good parents, and, and I was, and and some hardship and some trauma, I think any man can become anything they want to be. You're supposed to be a warrior. You're supposed to be a warrior. So you have to be the guy who goes, okay, the wind's blowing in this direction. Uh oh, Jeffrey, laughing again. Go ahead, Jeffrey. I just, I just see him editing these videos himself of like, like him all flexing and shit. Like it's too funny. Hey, Jeffrey, the thing about him is he don't even have his own social media accounts. Everything that's posted, everything posted you know about him, you know because he told you, dude. Like, no, it's because of what I've seen of it. Yeah, what I've seen about him. Everyone oh, has. Seen. Anyone on the internet, they have a body of a body of content that they're able to control. It's not how they are. I used to, dude, I worked with Adam Kokesh for two years. The dude's a fucking psycho. And everyone thinks he's the greatest human on the world because of his body of content. And it's not real. You control your body of content on the internet. Anything what do you mean you it's not real? Is, is what was not real? Really real? What was you, not real? You, you, you know, this shit ain't real, man. Go to the house to see if all the shit's real. You don't Jeffrey, know. Jeffrey, what was not real about Adam Kokesh? Give me an Who example. Who is this guy? Huh? You know a little bit about him, and I've, I've followed him in the past quite a bit. I don't anymore because uh, I don't know what right he's doing now. Right off the bat, the, the Rob Gray uh, uh, Mulligan Mint fiasco. He helped a guy named Rod Gray steal millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars from libertarians in about like in between 2012 and 2014. Um, Adam's still getting paid by the guy, Rob Gray, who had to flee the country and go to China because he's, he went with basically several like million tons of precious metals that he stole from libertarians right off the bat. There's that one. No one really knows about it. You can look and it up. How do you know the this Mulligan is true? Is dead. Um, if you Google that, you can find all kinds of information. Well, what about him, uh, cocking yeah. the gun in, uh, in, uh, DC, that, uh, I, when when Adam went to jails, when I was working with him, me and Adam organized the final revolution march on D.C., which was going to be an armed march going into D.C. where we weren't allowed to have guns. But it was going to be like it was going to be like a thousand vets and like, uh, you know, support. Guys. You know, like, okay. So anyway, you just said I that anybody down, guys. State is here but you, but you follow state. She as well. so you just said. You weren't allowed to have a gun there. This is like 10 years ago, dude. All right. Well, you're yeah, still we were going. We were know going to defend Kesha, the right Paul? to carry. Do you know who we he is? We were going to defend the right to carry. We were going to go. Literally, the, the D.C. Pol chief of police was like, if you come here, we're going to shoot you guys. Hey, and Paul. then Adam got arrested doing some stupid fucking event, some the, the Philly smoke down. And while he was in jail, they scared him out of doing it because we had we had like forty five thousand people say that they were going to be there on Facebook, which really only means like maybe a thousand. But even if a thousand showed up, it would have been crazy. 
So anyway, he goes on the Young Turks and they ask him about it. And he's like, oh, I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, Kokesh went on the Young Turks? Yeah. No. All I right. never I saw that. You, uh, dude, is a he used to have, really? have a show on RT, you know? I know well, he had a show on RT, but I never thought that he would have gone on to the Young so Turks. When he, when he got arrested, the young or, Turks, or someone who popping the shotgun was after he called off our big event that was going to be an actual interesting event, and he called it off, and then went and did that stunt and got thrown in jail, and I had to like, I had to fly to DC and like, like you know, release all his employees and like deal with all his bullshit while I was gone while running his face YouTube and like dealing with him in jail. And it was retarded. Months so did of he actually life. write his book in jail? The freedom, the book freedom. I, I, did he? I, I, I told him to write that book. I'm the reason why that book's black and white. I'm the reason why it's called freedom with an exclamation point. Like it, he, uh, I was uh, like, he, Adam absorbs shit from people. He doesn't come up with his own ideas. That book hey, Mr. is Dumfries. all plagiarized. It's not his writing. It's all a bunch of other people's writing. It's just a really good compilation. I actually, there's uh, there's three paragraphs in that book that I wrote myself about nonviolent. Mr. Jeffrey? Um, Mr. Jeffrey? Huh? I just have to speak something now that I just made the connection. You know, Eric O'Shaney keeps calling everybody an agent, but. Now that someone just brought it up, weirdest thing, he was there on January 6th as a journalist and got arrested. Oh. Damn. Eric Boshaney. Boshaney, yeah. Which means he would have had the feds come in and ask him a lot of questions, which means that him running to China and appropriating a culture and then talking about fuck America and guns after the fact seems a lot like I Rob Gray. Know, Agent hey, behavior. The guy I just told you about, <laughs> Rob Gray. Maybe working China. for the leftist side of the feds. Maybe, right? Because I'm I sure there's a left there side, right hey, side. Uh... Check that message, Paul. So, I mean, what else if I, I, I mean, when Adam when Adam got arrested, he did this whole campaign uh, raising money to like uh, put jury nullification definitions in all the subways. And he said that if if they, you know, if everyone donated, he he just he wouldn't plea. He would just let jury nullification take care of everything. And he raised like 30 or $40,000 off of, you know, the broke libertarians basically, and then took a plea deal and never said anything about it again. Um, I don't know, dude, I could go all day about sketchy shit about Adam. Like I saw, I like I became him for like a year. So I, I, I learned about all the sketchy shit, dude. He was, he was, dude, that company was sending out, silver round like the silver rounds that didn't even weigh the right amount like it, there was all kinds of sketchy stuff um but uh and then he's an animal abuser he kicked he caught, got caught beating his dog a bunch of times um you know and you i mean there's there's he he docks that kid's family or that there was some troll on um street on steam it that was the lad the reason he left facebook was because he was like talking to this guy's this guy, he was tr guy that was trolling Adam. He like talked to the dude's like twelve year old kid and was like, "Your parents are fucking crazy." And he was like talking all this shit to like the guy's kids. And then he hired a uh, 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 he hired a a, um, a hacker to dox the like to, to like basically ruin the guy's life. And then the hacker brought it all forth and told everyone on Facebook and like. And then Adams never, never answered to it. He just left Facebook. And now he's doing crystal meth out in Arizona. And he's been hooked on meth for probably two years. Um, that came How from his wife. How do you know wife. all that? What uh, is his wife, Straight from his wife's mouth. And he said he worked People just bring me years. shit. Because, uh, like, uh, like, he, he, like, I had a really big, big public falling out with that dude. Like he has with everyone else. Um, and people just bring it to me because they know what happened to me. And so, you know, uh, it, it's, it's like, it's been something that's been going on for a long time. And then, I mean, he, uh, he paid for someone to come to my family court and lie in court to try and get my kid taken away from me. Um, wow. there's all kinds what of stuff. He's talk, he's talk, he's talk, what every you, single, what, like, what, he's what, tried to talk to all my family members, all my ex-girlfriends, like the dude's a psycho. Um, and I didn't do anything paid, but help him when why I do you think when he paid a false, a false witness. You know how much 
if if you could prove that that was a fa- false statement by a false witness or however you want to describe it, if you can prove that's what happened the way you just put it out, he'd be fucked. Why do you think he would he would risk that? Huh? Yeah, that's a pretty he big get, He's on meth. He's on meth. Okay. Are you All kidding? Right. Well, that's a great answer. <laughs> Give me a break. Wow. Crazy ass people. I mean, I love Illumitami. I'm not saying he's on meth, but uh, I think he was on meth for long enough to be. I can't stand Illumitami. He fucking. No. Did you see how much he wrote <laughs> last he's, night? Motherfucker. Scary, dude. Uh, he sent four comments last hours. night with eight paragraphs for each thing. Who does that, man? Over a broadcast, the guy's whacked the fuck out and his still first, can't see it. His the first. Fact that he would take that much of his time and energy to type all that out Wait, over so- what? Waste energy. Just, first oh, your own from the way. He was masked, and you allowed him to to run, not run, but you allowed him to dick around on streamyards for six hours. Afterwards, he loves the fucking uh, attention. I'm sure a lot of people up here do. I'm sure that's half the reason why I'm here. I'm not trying to talk shit, <laughs> but I think it's entertainment that uh. I don't know. We see us. I don't know if he's a meth head or not. Former, semi, current meth head. I think it's fun to watch. Hey, Andy comic. Taint is in here. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you're an idiot. Did you say Andrew Whoever Taint? That is, whoever that is, you're an idiot. You know that, right? <laughs> oh, Andy Taint. <laughs> 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 With a picture of him down there in the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is the That's pretty good. <laughs> Sir, whoever you are, I have a spot of the panel for you, right? I want to know who you are. I don't know why, There's but a I have spot a few... here for you. Why are you neglecting your duty up here? I don't know why, Paul, but I had a strange suspicion that might be Tommy. I don't know why I felt that. <laughs> well, if he can hack and dox and fucking swap people, why so wait a second, plot twist, plot twist. <laughs> I just told whoever that is to come up on the panel, and it's Tommy. He just Holy played shit. me. <laughs> now oh, he comes in. I oh. told you, Paul, the Andy Tate was great. Here I am. <laughs> Andy Tate. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Got him. So much time. I don't know why. That's, sister, bro. that's my premonition. That. I hope I'm wrong. I'm trying to have your tackle box. He comes in with a bald head <laughs> and a silk shirt. I told you, bro, I was on to something. <laughs> I'm trying to get your tackle box, talk, bro. Tommy, I'd love you if you just stop fucking ranting and rambling and definitely don't type out paragraphs and paragraphs on YouTube. Definitely don't do that. He's definitely smart. There's not. I mean, we ain't saying that, but he's just too much to handle sometimes. Well, I'm not saying he's smart. You're saying that, sir. Well, he has, some, he has some intelligence. I think he's smart. I think he he's smart. He's just that. he's just a little bit mentally unstable. No, yeah, I think, yeah, I think a little he's bit a chemical a chemical imbalance. Maybe, yeah, something like that. But I don't think he's a dumb guy. No, no. he wants to be the class clown. That's what I see, at least. I don't know if it's true. Maybe. Um, following it. Oh, wow. Andy Taint. <laughs> I think he wants to be smart while being fucked up, being a mess. No, like he said, he's he wants the attention, he wants to have fun, but sometimes, sometimes I'm looking for a, a different energy, right? And he doesn't know when is when. He comes in, we're in the middle of like crying, me and someone else, me and Dick are in here. All right, I'm in here crying on Dick. And, and the next thing you know, this guy comes in, totally flips the whole energy with some nonsense. I'm like, bro, you can't feel we're having a moment here. You know, he just comes in and gets right to his rap, whatever he prepared before he came on. Some, some <laughs> uh, bit he's going to do. Some manic bit. <laughs> he was up for hours preparing oh, that. I'm See, if he was smart, he'd come up now and say, yeah, that was me. I think I banned him. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, I went off on everyone last night. I'm sick of everybody's bullshit. They want to power you to me. I'm sick of it. Yo, know, I don't even understand what's going on with uh well, I do understand with Eric. He clearly said you're a punk ass bitch and I don't get why. <laughs> but um 
Like, Moose, what did he do again? Did he just didn't like it when you were trying to be real with him? What happened? Talking shit behind his back. Another, yeah, like, Eric. He didn't okay, bring shit. I just didn't He said Paul did some shit said. that he never Paul told Paul did, like, about five broadcasts. <laughs> Right. Wait a second. Did he really have the balls to come in here and say what happened with Moose after I just did like yeah. 36 Three hours days? of broadcasting? Do you think a normal motherfucker can follow a nine hour broadcast? Thomas, please. <laughs> He's kind of right about that, Paul. Yeah, <laughs> you mean, that's, that's, that's kind of hard to do. <laughs> oh, man. You didn't see the whole panel of them folks with a year's worth of resentments uh, no, they never told no, me about? I jump in. Mm -hmm. nah, jump in. I just you want me to fucking right. start this up again. I'll play it again tonight. No, we don't want no, to. No, 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 and uh, he I needs a new daddy. He needs answer. a new daddy. I'm no longer his daddy. That's the long and short of it. So if you want to foster nah, that child, offended. Michael's well, Pino, you can do that. No, I'm not trying to be anyone's daddy. I tried to let him know that you know you're. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know what to say. Unrequited love story. He um, wanted to meet me in Mexico. I didn't want to meet him. I oh, wouldn't give him enough love. He said if I'd have just treated him nicer, he wouldn't have did all this. Backbit me, sabotaged, deleted people from my channel, uh, mocked me about money because he's a jealous, envious hoe, blocked me on Messenger after he messaged me about money, unblocked <laughs> himself, and then deleted the message like a little hoe. It was so Paul's really small genitalia, Tom. And this is what it really boiled down to. That's but the thing. I couldn't satisfy him. I couldn't go deep enough on him with it, right? It's a combination of my inferior producer. genitals and, and exterior stomach, right? I have too much stomach, too little genitals. I can't achieve full penetration on Michael Cena. So right. I couldn't you really gotta, satisfy him. You've got to dig through five inches of Carhartt to get to two inches of Pecker. I get it. Right. Um, but right. Why, is, why is Cena so irritated? Because... Because he, he needs a work. daddy. Michael Cino didn't have a father in his home. What don't you get? Uh, yeah, it's not yeah. this isn't that mysterious. These folks it's don't have a man in the mysterious. home that shows them leadership through their emotions. He didn't Here's even have a man, can... let alone a man that could control himself and his emotions. I'm not near Raise your hand if you did, had a man in the home that he wasn't there or couldn't control his emotions. Couldn't keep it real all the time without getting sensitive and emotional, trying to be controlling and dominating and spinning narratives. Here's your problem. Yeah, Did you? They say they, they're saying that you doxed him. Did you dox him, Paul? I don't believe you did, but you know, saying what his does that name mean? Is doxing. No, Shut up, know. Thomas. He asked me a direct fucking question. When someone says Paul and asks a question, that's not the time for you to talk. Sure. At some point, I heard a narrative that uh, you doxed him and put out his family's information or something. How could I do that? I don't. Know I don't what I don't I do know. That? I have no that's what I. Done. That's what I thought. But there no, was a I have narrative. His personal number. He lied again. See, thanks, Lou. He lied again. You want me to put his cell phone number out because he said I can release all text messages, so legally I can put his number out now because his number was part of one of my text messages. Well, uh, whatever. Don't do that. But... No, no. I well, think he, he said I did it. No, no, no. He said I did it. So let's do it now because. I'm not doxing him. Can you stop making that noise? If you're going to do it for the fourth time this broadcast, will you mute first? Every time you touch that mic, it makes a ton of noise in my ears. Please. Thank you. Who was Please that? Thank you. So, what? I don't know, whatever. So if you want, we can, we can release the text messages. He gave me consent on an open platform to give, and I'll release the message with his phone number in it. Then everyone can give Mikey Sino a call and ask him Man. personally what he thinks about the situation and what he did, if you want to know so much about it. Because all no, the facts I, are here I, and I put him on the record. He's a two-faced scumbag liar who lies to his wife, has an alcohol problem and abandonment issues because he had no father in his home. Yeah, I, I could see really that. Like I could see what? that. I think Paul likes him too. He oh, I saw so... potential in him and I wanted to help him. I loved him and cared for him when I knew he was dishonorable and I knew he would eventually turn on me. I did just like Jesus did with Judas. I loved him until he betrayed me because I didn't love him enough. Because my version of love isn't cute and cuddly. I tell you what the fuck you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Man, you like him or you wouldn't be so fired up about him. He did fuck up, though, but I just don't know what Bro, it is. I care about all people, and I'm sick and tired of watching all of us accept less for ourselves and each other in truth. It's pathetic and embarrassing. Yeah, that's the sad yeah, part. Well, we all do like, that Just shit. stand up and be a man. 
Thomas, the reason you can't see what Moose did is the reason why you're a dumbass. Brian, I think the reason I can't see what Moose did is because there was multiple long hour streams and I have a fucking life. I'm not homeless and can watch the shit 24 7. Uh, Let me throw See what they do, right? Right to the homeless shit, shit, right? Right to the homeless shit. Like, why is walking around making videos about leaf blowers? How dare you? I (laughs) wish I had the confidence to just live in my car and not work, but instead I work and bust my ass in slave labor so that way I can. Not live in a car or something. I don't and know. Be a slave, yeah. Uh, you'd be surprised. I literally went into the office this morning. My boss is like, "Can't send you here because he knows they accept slaves only. Can't send you here. They accept slaves only." What? Like he had what? to. So basically, you're a slave. You're just an uncooperative slave, which is the worst kind of <laughs> no, slave. No, 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 no. I work under a contract, and I don't fucking. Whatever, do it. Say what you will, Paul. This is <laughs> Thomas is learning. <laughs> Thomas finally learning after eight months. Maybe how to not argue with me when I'm making the quips. You know, he's finally figured that out. No, I think uh, I think Brian O'Shea, you're doing a great job. As much shit as I talk, you think I hate you? I actually don't. Anyway, he looks more peaceful, Brian, lately. <laughs> Are you more you look, peaceful, Brian? You look fatter than ever. You greasier <laughs> than ever. That's Piggier not, than no. ever. Jay, he was giving you a compliment. And you oh, yeah, giving you a compliment and you go to shit on me. <laughs> you, went to, you went to tell him he looks fatter than ever. That's not. Dude, yeah, that's you not just, you're, you're just not mentally all there, are you? <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. He hasn't left that room in weeks. <laughs> it looks like he's been in that position. He's just same, shirt. Like, find you. <laughs> same shirt on for a week. You went from <laughs> Burt Reynolds to Yurt Rentals, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed because that was dumb, not because it was good. Yeah, that was pretty dumb, O'Shea. Come on. Do I don't know what that. that means, but you're a tent. You, 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 <laughs> can, do, you can do a lot better, Brian. A lot better. I, mean, a I don't, I don't saying, really think so, saying, but your you're mother saying, would tell you that. You're I'm saying sure. Lou's new channel should be in a tent shirt with books? <laughs> in Lou's shirt in with a, books. In a yurt shirt with books. <laughs> <laughs> is in fact made by a yurt maker. <laughs> Look at that armpit. You could just be resting got, your head against. Read the book. Sweat stain on it and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's all natural. Okay. Too. Yeah. So that he's he's a little rank. He doesn't use you and he doesn't believe in it. He's a little spicy out there in the woods. Yeah. You gotta do it, Paul, because I can't do it. One thing I see about comedians is a lot of them have their little awkward phrase they say, like you say, yeah, and you kind of took it from Paul. But if you make something funny, like think of a, a punchline and just say that every time you feel awkward. Like, uh, for example, Dusty Slay is a comedian. He says, we're having a good time instead of yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like that. There was a guy, Hamburger, who always used to yeah. say hamburger after all of his punchlines. <laughs> you know what Brian's can be? <laughs> Brian's can be, where am I again? <laughs> that, that might work. Good. What was I talking about? Where am yeah, I? You do that oh, hey, you know, this that's that's right. Right. And, and you look right. around, you know, you well, look left and right. Sort of an interstitial segue, right? Like get her done. <laughs> Try to come yeah. up with your own. Yeah, he just did. Like, what I, I got one for you. Talking about? I got one for you. I got one for you. Get him done. Get him done. Yeah. Get, Get him, him done. done. Uh, <laughs> well, Brian, like that. Do a good Piznog. Come on. Pull up the Piznog. No, we don't do Piznog one. here anymore. Why? Says, yeah, it's illegal. No it's no illegal no now? It, really? I found out no one ever liked it, and it yeah. made no sense. What? And, was... and I forced Brian O'Shea to do the reads they said. Piz- Piznog was him. the best. Even oh, though yeah, he made it up, I forced him to do the reads and used to Oh, fuck. So he got publishing rights. Well, yeah, according to Eric, we had, we had a whole team of CIA agents that wrote that Piznog script for me to read before they laid out the fucking production team. I love the fucking cross-eyed woman. That That's fucking gold, man. Selling the Piznog, like Christmas Piznog. That's well, what, you know. And we got a team of 20 producer, people working on it. The real producer. 
That's fucking gold, man. I almost yeah. want to watch Christmas. Not, right? I'm good for Andrew Tate, of course. You know, yeah. it's in their it's in their downtime. <laughs> what was her so name? Not doing I, Andrew I, Tate monologues. They're doing Piznog uh, reads. Piznog adverts. <laughs> the cross-eyed girl was her name. Philomena. Yeah, it's my yeah, sister. Yeah. She looked like a Philomena. Yep. You got it right, Lou. What's bring your younger up, daughter's Paul. name again? Juliana? Shut up, bitch. My bad. Bring, her up, bring up the cross-eyed bring up cross-eyed Philomena. Let's do a little old to piss. Oh. All right. All right. Well, well, one time for old time's sake, but Come honestly, on, Brian, do it. I don't know about the products, you know? Come but on. Just be good. Good. Oh, yeah, fuck I, it seems all misunderstood now. Seems like no one. Oh, really fuck. That was, that was the best on. part of the show. Well... I guess, you know, some folks liked it, but most folks, what I heard is didn't really get it, didn't know why I was doing it, and they want to know who's writing the scripts, the reads, who, you know, when we're doing the, the advert, who wrote all that? Who wrote all that down? We, who did the grab? We came up, there she is, Philomena. <laughs> With the yellow that's teeth. Brian's sister. Uh, yeah, that's my sweet, my sweet, adorable sister she's a loving loving right, woman. one more read one more read for old time's sake and maybe never any products ever again because no one likes them why no i like them who were who, who the fuck that, that shit yeah i like well, the products well I'm see i don't know the moose circle doesn't seem to like them all the folks over there and you got to do the pocket the watch the 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 patriot it's player the hater pocket watch all right let's just get through this one for old time's sake and just just get through it. All right. Guys, Give her. guys, come on. Christmas, you know, has ended. And we did a, we did a hey, great Oshay, job. Hey, Oshay, I want you to do some segues in the middle of stuff too, right? Like we're having a good time here. You know, whatever. Just play with it, right? Like instead of I don't know how you always do or instead of the yeah that you stole from me. Um, what was I just, talking about? What were you talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are we talking about? Somebody, somebody yeah. descending into Alzheimer's. Uh, where, where, am I? Where, where am I again? <laughs> Dude, I was I was driving with I was driving the car and I had someone in the passenger seat and I was like, who the fuck is this dude? <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> I can see that. All right, are you gonna do the read or you want me to do it? Um I got this. I got this. Fuck it. Old time sake, we got a fucking tribute. It's a tribute. It's a tribute. All right. <clears throat> All right, guys. Christmas has ended. We did a great job as a country spending lots and lots of money on fucking bullshit and plastic. But you guys, you know, we don't have to be down on ourselves because we fucking, you know, maxed out the credit cards and felt like we got gypped and got in fights with the family, got drunk and fucking had a bunch of problems. Don't worry about that. We're going to rebound. It's a new year. It's a new us. We got that fucking new gym membership that we fucking paid way too much for. But don't worry about it. Put it on the credit card. Everything's good. So we got to spend some money. And one great way to spend money is on some nutritious, wonderful Piznot. This stuff is straight from the gods, from the glory, the nectar of the higher ones. Spiritual fucking ascenders. So please, for the love of everything that's good and holy for this great nation of ours, we have to repair it. So spend some money. Go to amaslave.com. It's $24.99. And if you use the promo code, Lou is a fat grease pig, you get 20% off. Thank you so much. Oh, God, I don't know. I fucking, I got to get off the weed. What the fuck? <laughs> It yeah, was you're, mediocre, you're but oh, no, 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 no. See, at the end there, you're supposed to say we're having a good time it. here instead of, I don't know, I got to get off the weed. It made it through. Time. We're having a good time here. You struggled, <laughs> you struggled through that one. You didn't know where you were. Giving some uh, that was, that was know, not that is, like so. that's something another comedian says all the time. So if you use that, realize you're stealing from from another comedian. But I'm just saying that's his. Like he's clearly awkward on stage. He's very funny, but when he says, he wants to say all right or okay, whatever the fuck you say, he says we're having a good time here. He puts his his palm up. It's funny <laughs> to me. It's funny to a lot of people and. I'm just saying, if you come up with your own punchline, your own thing to say instead of, yeah, it's going to go great <laughs> for you. It'll be a punchline. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I think what went what wrong there, I was trying to appease the audience too much, like put some context to the Piz instead of just going off and having fun with the Piz. I was trying to fucking actually sell it and make it seem somewhat fucking reasonable. Brian but, O'Shea, but you, you might want to re- resurrect the old uh, Rodney Dangerfield. You know, I never get any respect. That yeah. Because he didn't make yeah. it till he was 55 either. And I'm almost 55, so fuck it. Do your own <laughs> take on that bit. What are you looking you know, at? One of, one of your things can be, O'Shea, one of your things could be like in the middle of the show, you turn to the to the host, you know, and you say, are you sure you want, it, you want me up here? Or is this what you really wanted? <laughs> Is that what you do when you turn the girl? Yeah. Like, wow, you can go in your bedroom, you just turn to them in the morning. I could stop now, but you sure you want me up here? I'll keep going. Do you say to them when you're having sex with the girls in your room? Been drunk in the bar. Oh Shay, you're a good comedian. Stop stop hating on yourself. Let the yeah, let the power flow through you like a conduit. Yeah, like a condom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wrap All right, let's wrap up. up. We're coming up on two hours. You folks are boring me. To be honest. So you're boring. No, you're, you're boring, boring me. No, I'd be well, better off. Only boring people get boring, Paul. You no. must be boring. I'm alone. I'm bored. not bored. I'm only bored surrounded by boring people. Oh, yeah, when yeah, alone, yeah, I, yeah. When I'm alone, yeah, I can hear yeah. myself think. And then I become yeah. interested again. Yeah, yeah. So Jesse, it. what do you what do you how do you plan on fighting your case tomorrow? What do you plan on saying? Uh, I don't fight. I don't fight them. I go in there. I don't. I don't. I don't participate. Oh, you have a case tomorrow. It's hard to hear you a little bit. Sounds yeah, like turn up your volume. Eight thirty. Eight thirty in Roseville. Yeah, it's hard to hear you, but eight thirty in Roseville. Yeah. Let me see. Just going there and make fun of the judge. Well, Should meet up with him, okay? Give him some support. I'm gonna go over there, fuck you now. Yeah, but see, I won't even. I would just end up filming, uh, not getting in the building because I'm not gonna submit to the search and seizure. Right. See, I love that you brought that up yesterday. You're like, yeah, yeah you want me to come to court with you, yeah, but are you gonna go to the fucking you have to come to life. You can't let life come to you. If you let life come to you. Then you're going to be living inside of a matrix and a system which is designed not for you to live your best life. It's designed for you to comply. Darwin said it. It's not the strongest that survives. It's the most adaptable that survives. Any emotion you feel should be converted into positive influence. Yeah, yeah you should do good things with any emotion you feel. I, I can't. And what else are you going to do with it? My brother used to call me crazy. He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, no, there's the matrix. We're inside the system. We need to escape. And now I managed to find a way out. That's when you can escape the matrix. Money is a primary motivator to escape. I've always been interested in freedom more than money. It's not about having nice things. It's about having freedom of mind and freedom of thought and freedom and autonomy of my own body. That requires money. So once you escape the matrix and you try and find a way to get your wealth outside of the system, then you can exist geographically anywhere. And once you can do that, then laws don't really apply to you. If they made a law in the UK I was unhappy with, I'd just leave. The slave mines... They'll Boy, that didn't age the well. Matrix tries to keep you poor. <laughs> <laughs> Dick, please. <laughs> don't, don't hold us accountable to the right. present facts. No one really ex- – no, not right, Thomas. Shut no, up. He's got to run. I'm a slave. I got to run. When someone says don't do this, I run away to where they can't catch me. <laughs> 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 I think what Dick was saying is there's nowhere to run anymore, even if you chose that as a bullshit, uh, bullshit. You know what? You know what? The DC area, people say it's the most <laughs> fucked. My own mother's like, man, I thought you would get yeah, because you're around a bunch of people that that, that suck the narratives dick. And I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm not about to go to Mexico or fucking Arizona or wherever the fuck people think they're free, Missouri. Everything the media tells you is designed to make you poor. <laughs> Paul. Belief is a huge part. So if you don't believe you can, yeah, what else are you going to do? What are you really going to do with your life? So as a man, you have to wake up and think, okay, everything I want, other men want. I have to outcompete every other man to get it. So how am I going to do that? Am I going to do that by living in the moment, ignoring my phone, having a fun picnic? 
I used to talk with my brother about it all the time. I was like, bro, we're doing something wrong. Something doesn't add up. Mm. We're still thinking in terms of like make money, spend money, money in the bank. It doesn't. There's people who are living for free and they just point at things and they get everything they want. I don't think that men should ever consider how happy they are. I think that for a man, the paradigm of analyzing yourself based on your mood is an incorrect way to approach life. I just don't think it makes you competitive. This is the thing that's amazing. And I talk a lot about money, but I'm not that financially driven. I just understand if you don't have money, you can't have an opinion. You can't say what you think. You can't do what you're not told to do. The human mind is a massively misunderstood and underused chemical factory. That's all it is. It's the reason you feel happy. It's the reason you feel sad. It's the reason you feel excited. It's only chemicals in your brain. And I think if you try and take conscious control of your mind and force yourself to feel what you want, when you want, you can truly start to feel emotions on command. I can get excited over a cup of coffee. I don't want anybody to be offended by anything I say. I want to be a positive force in the world. I don't want anybody to hear what I say and make them feel bad about themselves. Mm. I want all people to live righteous and good, whether they're male or female. I believe in things that make me strong. And someone goes, well, you're wrong. Listen, let's assume, let's assume you're correct and that makes me wrong. Let's say that you're right. Why would I want to adopt the thinking of a man who is sad? Why would I want to think like you? Wouldn't it better to be wrong and be happy and have a sports car or a yacht? I don't like it. Good <laughs> things are always happening to me. Right. Good things. Right. That's always a great happening. place to pause. <laughs> I knew, I knew that would trigger Thomas and Jeffrey. Uh, no, I mean he's right card. on a half the level, but the other half, they don't like, make you happy. I'm okay being a fuck. As long as my fucking dick sweat, like that's one of my problems. <laughs> Jeff, why is that the only thing you heard though of what he just said? It's not the only thing. Uh, Jesse, we're not all closed minded. We can think of more things than one <laughs> than one thing at once. No, I'm saying why is that the only thing? It's Jeff not. Heard? That's your assumption. You assume it, you fucking are liable. You're hey dumb. Thomas. Hey that's Thomas, can we said. come back to the now and out of your imagination, please? No, nah, all right. So Jesse, I love you, and I think that uh, Andrew Tate. I just think he says a lot of bullshit too, and I call it out. That's all. Yeah. So you don't believe in financial security and freedom, Thomas? All yeah. Right, what so was bullshit of what he just what said? Tate said. It's no different than like a said... rap song being like, oh, get that fucking money, get the fucking, you know, fuck, fuck your bitch, I'm going to take your bitch. It's all the same kind of shit. Like, it's all fucking basic monkey fucking just, oh, uh, uh, compete in pack capitalism. Like, woo, how awesome. <laughs> Crony capitalism, cool. Just waste all your money fucking on a car that depreciates in five fucking minutes. Like, it's just dumb shit. That's Every right, time you buy a new I car, a new taxable entity that generates money for the fucking war machine for decades to if come. If you're wealthy like the Christ of being, to buy you'll go somewhere. Supercars don't, super cars don't depreciate. No, well, they get Please. laid off by your taxes. That's what. That's why every, all these rich people or all these business owners get expensive cars because a car that's because they play the system. They rob. A complete write off on your business. Greed. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. right. Car. It's there. a tax thing. Jesse, but turn up your volume, brother. You're really low, Jesse. I don't know how. Real well. Go to settings on StreamYard. Go to settings. Hit audio, and then it'll come up, and you can turn yourself up. So it's cool to invest if it's something that that doesn't depreciate as much, even if you're paying thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to the to the war machine. To, okay. to, to tax it, yeah, you should do that. And insurance companies and all this stuff, all this tax generation. It's cool if it's not a depreciating, if it, it's not a depreciating asset. That's what you're saying. How's so that? we should all buy Lamborghinis. No, well, it's just, it's just that it's a tax write off, like, so it's a completely what? free car. This dude no, isn't so living the, the life we live. We like, why tax? is he so interesting to you? Yeah. If you're like, making hell of money like that, like Andrew Tate has. See, I love your confidence, but damn. Well, not he said. Like you said, if he's wrong, then oh well, he was happy. 
it, it, yeah. those cars don't make you happy, though. No, I've had sports it, happiness cars. comes from being. You have to Hollywood choose to be Hill happy. And had a sports car and had uh, you know you like to, girls lining up down the block. You have to choose happiness. Happiness, happiness. happiness don't come he, from he nowhere else. That. Freedom. He said that too, right? Yeah. You have to choose yeah. to be happy. Happiness comes from the So what is being freedom? So emotionally invested in a woman, and when she ain't there, you go to forgetting about who and what you are and what your purpose. Damn. What does that have to do with anything? What does it mean to anything? That means to everything. <laughs> Living from within. Listen on their fucking name, and it's not their fucking name, and the fuck. What? What's that, David? We all deal with different forms of bondage. How many names in their name? Go ahead, David. What's your last name? Is that your surname, Jeffrey? Oh, David. Uh, yeah. What's that? Jeffrey. Yeah, Phillips. Is, is Phillips your last name? You were breaking up earlier. It was kind of hard to tell. Uh, no, Jeffrey's my first name. Is Phillips your last name? Correct. It's not your last name. Why the fuck you have it on your identity on your screen? I said correct. Your last name. Yes, bro. What? If you've done your research, Allie you know says, Allie wow. says Andy Stop Tate is her daddy. Caves. Okay, is that your last name? Even though it's a more cooler last name than other people's last names. I knew Allie loved Tate. I knew Allie loved Tate. That's why Jeff was so mad about it. <laughs> That's what it is. So, so Jeffrey knew that Allie was into Andy and that that was daddy and that makes yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, green shirt guy, did you know that Jeff puts his real name on his own YouTube channel? Uh-oh. What I put mine too. What? Ain't here. I'm just saying it doesn't really matter. You t the what? internet is a place of monikers. If you want to know someone's real what? name, you have to ask him like a man. Guy, Don't come across and be like, "Why didn't you tell me before I asked you?" You know who that is? Not Chris all right now. Don't use a name that don't belong to you. Right, Paul? <laughs> I am oh, that you I am. Change your last name. You can't be enslaved anymore. All right. What, what is his last name? name? Oh, I'm at. <laughs> your, your fucking set moniker is not your name. What are you talking about? What? I'm You're confused a right man, now. You don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Well, that has nothing David. to do with what we were talking about, right? So, David I'm Michael. I'm dumbass, too, because I don't know his, his name. On his YouTube channel, he's going to be just his given name. But here, he's going to be the slave name, right? You're creating a conspiracy, sir. Who gives a Fuck about Comrade Jeffrey. Eric. You do. Comrade Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Just another fucking. Comrade, hold on a second. Comrade Eric, is that you? <laughs> over there, is he, over there he's, he's in Shanghai. Is that him in Shanghai? Comrade Eric, are you there? Working for the Chai Coms. Chai Com Eric. There he is. There he is. Slow down. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Wait a second. It's actually you. I thought it was someone doing a bit. All right. You know how to get to my heart, you filthy, disgusting, Voldemort, Grimer, worm tongue creature. Let me ask you, you a know how to get question. Right? You know how to manipulate me with humor, don't you, you son of a bitch? Let me ask you a simple question. A simple question. Let me look you in the face, Eric Boshane. Okay. Can you name a single person in your life that you've never said fuck you to? Yeah. Many. A lot. Really? You've never just said, oh, fuck really? you. Yeah, I'm you. not angry and miserable like you, and I try to control oh, stop. myself. Really? I, mean, I wait. care about what I say to people. I never told Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer, I ever told you anything like fuck you? Anything like that. Even when you were getting emotional and we had to go through some shit and whatever and have conversations. Never got loud. Well, I got a little bit passionate, right, from time to time about the truth, but never said fuck you, never... Right, always let you kind of whatever work through it, and yeah, okay. So no, I don't get emotional and tell people fuck you because they don't do and say what I don't like. Okay, I I find that rare. I, I think I can't name one person. I know self mastery is rare. If you stick around and stop backbiting on me, you'll learn something. I'm not backbiting. Ready? I'm just saying, like you know, we get upset at the people closest to us. Right, but you didn't get upset to me and at me. You got upset that you had five viewers instead of five million. Anyway, and said, the context, you know, anyway, context, did, context, you got an oh. ego that's out of hand. <laughs> there's one bit. There's one video where somebody took a little thing and I said, "Fuck." Hey, you. are you? Is this your form of apology, or are you back to manipulate more? No, I. Yeah, I'm, I guess I apologize that I let context get the best of me. I, 
I have never. No, that's not a real apology. I'm sorry that I bad bit the that... hand that fed me and I talked shit and was dishonorable and disgraced oh, okay. myself okay. and my yes, honor I do in public. Apologize for, I do apologize that okay. my, my thoughts didn't correlate with my emotions. The intent was never to, to say fuck ball, write you off completely. And you embarrassed yourself in front of the five people that were there to watch you, which is why you don't have five million. It, the, yeah, again, no, the context was the, the context was I'm trying to listen. Hey, do we you want to listen to it? Let's listen to it together. Fuck Paul. Punk no, 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 you can't break. No, 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 no. Let's listen to it together. I think it would be valuable to hear yes, the context as you put it. Are you context. hearing this, Moose? Are you hearing this, Moose? Because they're big on context. Let's hear the context, Moose. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hear the context. Right. I know. I love to see them down for How many people are watching? Five? Five watching. What? Hey, that's good editing. Good job. Go ahead. My life is worthless. Five. <laughs> five million or what? I mean, five watching? Yeah, and I'm not the most. Fuck you, Paul. All right, <laughs> ass bitch. No, punk ass bitch, too, oh, right? That's what it was. So, you know, I didn't know I was a punk ass bitch. Okay. I figured if I was one and you felt that, you'd tell me to my face, right? Oh, God. Do you want me to call you that to your face and then work? I want you, you to start what? being a man and tell me what the fuck you think and feel to my face and not to everywhere but I me. Told you. I don't that's like what you. a punk ass bitch does, oh, just so you know what a punk yeah. ass bitch is. Gonna, what you just did there was being a punk ass bitch. Just so you know for the future. So I'm not that. You showed you're that. <sighs> I know it's a lot to deal with, right? The consequences of your thoughts, emotions, and actions. I get so it. You, That's how we learn. Well, did you want the context? No. I got I'm the not. context. You're a player hater. Simple. Yeah, I really don't like your... Paul, I got no problem with you, but some of your panels is, are, are pretty trash. Yeah, I'm not interested in what you like and don't like. Now what? So, so, so that's not Paul. It's people like you. <laughs> no, I don't need anybody else to speak. I'm good just talking to Boshaney. This is me and Boshaney, not anybody else. You want the context? I don't need the context. I got enough. I got well, enough for you. Well, I'm going to say it for the record. I was talking about the. No, nah, I'm going to let you leave now. Yeah. I'm going to let you leave now. If you okay. go in to try to qualify in your bullshit and try to manipulate further, I'm going to kick you out for being dishonorable. We all know the context. You're a fucking hater. There's one way back, Boshane. You folks don't get it. I'm a and hater. Your ego won't let you get it, right? I'm a hater. You're a Voldemort. Wait, I'm a hater. Your ego won't let you get it. I'm There's a hater. one way back, Boshane. I'm repent a hater. in authentic truth. I'm a stand hater. Stand on truth. Yes. Stand on truth and repent from hater. your ways because yeah, you're a okay. backbiting traitor hater. Oh, but you've got a panel coming back. I see what's I'm going on. I'm not interested in the panel. We're talking about me and you and your words, and okay, you're not you're being accountable for them. Well, then probably that the best context would not to be do it with a bunch of supporters. I'm not interested what you think about I'm my folks here now. Right. You lost that right. position. You lost that position to speak on anyone else, motherfucker, when you dishonored yourself and the truth and our relationship. Now you don't speak on anyone else. You speak on what the fuck you did and that alone. And if you don't, you're out of here and you don't come back. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Slow down. You've mentioned your perspective in terms with other folks. Bye. No. Bye. Do we do it in the private? Bye. Wait, wait. Do we do One it last time, Shane, Take accountability, responsibility for your do it private? Or do we're done. Do it private? Or or do we no, bitch. You did it in public. Now you're going to apologize in public. You should have ran your mouth no, in private no, instead no, of in public. Get, no, you you want to talk shit in public, public and apologize in private because you're a fucking coward. Don't let your ego get the best of you, bud. Hey, we can do it private. And if you want to make a, if you want to record it and do then it now it, or you don't come back. I'm not going to do it. Freaking people. Bye. 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 See how easy it is? Get the fuck out of my face. I don't need you in my life. You need me. I wanted you here and now I don't. I thought he you was going to do the right thing. Whatever it is you did before me. Still trying to crawl back and manipulate, huh? I thought you folks don't need me. Go over to Moose's panel. Talk your shit there. 
Did you so kick him or did he leave? You stay here anymore. You've exiled you know yourself from this community with your behavior. If you don't repent, that's where you sit. There's no other way back. Somebody's reverbing. You guys should meet up. Sit in the back, too. Now I kick you from the back area. Don't sit back there and look at me like you lost your puppy. Get the fuck out. What don't you get? <laughs> Sitting in the backstage area looking at me. It, it's Thomas. It's uh... Twice my age, you pathetic motherfucker. You got a woman to, to raise up. You got a daughter acting like a punk bitch. So you she can Thomas go out Paul. and marry a punk bitch and raise up another punk bitch. That'll put me in slavery. I'm <laughs> sick of you. Mute Tommy, Paul. Why? Because I laugh? Jesse, you're the one you're trying to Because you're feeding back, fuckface. Because you're feeding back, dude. All right, I'll leave and, and leave. No, your feedback was going back into your mic. Uh, what, that doesn't make sense. It's StreamYards. My mic can't hear the sound. It was here. It was, it was I don't know, bro. <laughs> Whatever. Yes, Paul was talking, the when Paul was talking, your thing was fucking, your thing was like it was speaking. Is it going now? Because it's good now. Paul yeah, talking. I don't think it was me. It was. Whatever. Maybe. Maybe. If it ain't going now, nothing changed. So maybe it well, isn't. Because Paul ain't talking right now. Duh. What? What <laughs> changed that Paul stopped talking so he wasn't feeding back through your mic. All right, whatever. I'll just... I don't give a fuck. I don't know what the fuck... Y'all are retarded, man. No. i using the word. Did you not hear what was going on? Did you not hear the echo? No, I guess it was me. And if it ain't happening now, like, I just don't get it. Dude, okay, you guys it wasn't, so fucking annoying, I was you man. You were I'm so me. sticky, you motherfuckers. Get out! Three minutes to argue about technology and what's going on because you feel some kind of way about it, fuckface. No one cares what you feel about the feedback. Correct it or get the fuck out. I guess it was you because I'm yelling and I don't hear feedback. That's the best test, usually. I scream and I don't hear it no more. So it was you. So all you're whining about how you felt about what you did doesn't matter to us. Sorry, folks. I didn't mean to get all exercised. I just thought he was I'm tired of bitch boys and their feelings about every little goddamn thing cycling over it. <clears throat> Too much soy and estrogen, I guess. Yeah, and he has just no clue why about anything about moves. I didn't do anything. It wasn't my mind. Okay, maybe it was, but if it was, here's how I feel. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Holy fuck. Missed opportunity. I mean, none of the panel was saying anything. I don't know what we had to do with anything. Your thoughts, expert panel? And a hush went over the crowd. Take take it wherever you want to go with it. Thinking about signing up for Andrew Tate's Sir, Hustler it. University after this, Paul. I there appreciate you, you presenting you that info. It. It was valuable <laughs> Good stuff. Don't do that, Dick. Don't do that. <laughs> I see what you're doing now. Don't do all that. I'm going to get a report on uh, what I learned. That's hilarious. All right, back to Andy for a little bit. See if we could get Jeffrey triggered. <laughs> Jeffrey's we're, – we're thinning down the panel one at a time. Everybody's got the spirit of their mama caught up in their emotions, cock-necking and whining. It's just getting weeded out nowadays, it seems. I, I, can I just make one, one, one thing I seen today that I thought was pretty interesting? They took the fucking metal detectors out of the White House, and the bitch that did it, I guess, uh, she said, if the if the Democrats feel unsafe, to tell them to come talk to me so they can get a concealed weapons permit. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> what did you funny. just say? <laughs> okay, today or not, I don't know if it was today, but it was sometime this month that they took the, the all the metal detectors out of the White House, and as they were taking them out, they're filming it, right? And they're like, "Well, what about the, you know the Democrat Nancy Pelosi was a Nazi?" They were saying, and that's why they were then there. And they go, "Well, the Democrats are going to feel unsafe." And you go, "Well, tell the Democrats they come talk to me, and I'll give them a uh, concealed weapons permit so they can carry." And, and then and then they ask her, "Are you going to be carrying a, a pistol in the White House?" And she just walks away. <laughs> that's cool. See, they don't understand that permits and licensing and code is all for agents. 
Right. So men and women walk around with whatever we want. We give you the permit. Right. Hey, you That's established beautiful. that you're like going to be a good agent, not be a complete Nazi. So we'll give you a permit to carry a gun. You don't decide that we get permits or not for God-given rights. We permit you to do God-given rights when you're in a duty and obligation service capacity, right? I decide if I want my waitress to have a gun when she's bringing me food, right? I was wondering if they're going to take him out of the courthouses now. To be honest with you, they took him out of the White House. Why wouldn't they take him out of the fucking courthouses now? You're so you're the metal detectors. Yeah. Um, and just to be clear, just to be clear, if I, if I I'm not saying that was a bad analogy. I can't decide. Well, I guess in a service capacity, you could if the person signs on to obey the policy of the business. But uh, I prefer my waitress and waiters to have guns on them, like that one restaurant that everyone goes to because you've never seen a waiter or waitress or a woman with a fucking gun. Well, I Big prefer to have a, a good looking woman who, you know, knows her shit, right? Knows who she is and what she wants in life and has purpose and meaning. And she's got a gun on her side, knows how to make a damn good meal. All right. I don't know. I'm weird like that. It has your back too. Yeah, of course. That's the point. Yeah. These motherfuckers are sleeping with the enemy out here. Fuck, talking about sleeping. I'm sorry, guys. I gotta go. I can't stay up till four in the morning again. Yeah, get the hell out Good of here. Good night. Shut up, Blue Bass. Love you guys. <laughs> Fuck off, Jeffrey. Hasta mañana. Love You're you, the funniest. Lewis. You're the funniest <laughs> man alive, O'Shea. Don't let anybody tell you different. Okay, just believe in yourself, okay? Yeah, it is. All right, to you I'll like be I'm over soon to, to tuck you girl. in, Lou, and refill your water dish. Now get to okay. bed. All right. Talent's, talent's spewing from his eyes. Paul, don't forget to respond to that email. Yeah, man, that's a good point. Thank you for reminding me. What's up with the whole birthday deal? Why are you putting birth dates on a credentials card? It's not a birthday. It's, it's a fiction birth date. I actually oh, birth registration date? Nah, go back nine months and put the zygote date on there. There's no birth dates on there. And they're not going to claim that's fraud? How can they claim that's fraud? What does it say on the credential card? Does it say zygote? Uh, no. Okay. Then it's not fraud because the claim is not. Um, yeah, we, use, we use lingo that's not theirs or related to slavery terms. Okay. Then yeah. that makes, that, that makes some sort of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the day, our great-grandparents, they used to always use the zygote dates. They didn't even use the word conception because it was attached to slavery. So essentially what I do that is I take my birth, my born date, the day I was quote unquote born, uh, um, you know, popped out into this lovely simulation and we just go back nine months from that date. Yep. Okay. And for everybody's knowledge in the chat everywhere the birth date is actually the date the birth certificate was registered that's the birth date of the legal person your born day is your you're celebrating the birthday but it's really your born day not actually the birth well that's the thing is that the way that i do it is i have a born date and a birth registration date right my birth registration date is what i consider my birth date my born date is something completely different so when they ask me for a birth date it's not the day i was born it's the day the corporation was birthed because that's what they want anyway. They can't charge the man. They can only charge the person. The problem with that is when I give them the birth registration date, there's no record of that because they got an initial record attached to the born date. See how they all mismanage the affairs and the record keeping and conflate everything? Yeah. So they'll try to say I'm lying because I won't tell them what they want to know because I give them what they're asking for. It's expressed, not implied. I know what you're implying. What you're asking for is the day that I was birthed, not born. That's the day the person was created. And you were given a certificate, certification. There's verification, which is live birth record, and there's certification, which is registration. The registration is the transfer of some level of, of property, some type of conveyance of property or property rights or an establishment of some kind of a trust. So what I perceive is, what I like to say is it's the latter. I don't like to create malicious 
intentions, although there seems to be a lot of evidence to the fact that these folks created this as a slave system, I like to give folks the benefit of the doubt. This was an opportunity for us to do a magical fiat system, right? We could create something out of nothing. And if everybody puts in their time and energy and knows their worth and creates and is entrepreneurial, they can succeed, right? Now, there's folks out there say crypto is going to save us. Crypto is going to enslave us. Folks probably said the same thing about the fiat currency system. And you know what? They were both right. Because a man's success is not determined by his environment. It's determined by his inner space. Okay? So keep blaming fiat and crypto and everything else for why you're a procrastinating loser, unwillful, undisciplined, unlearned, disabled being in life who's unsuccessful and don't have nothing. And I'm willing to do nothing and can't go nowhere and can't impress nobody with anything you know or do because you don't have any results. Right. Keep blaming that on everybody else, the environment and the masters and watch how much you succeed. That's what Andy was talking about when he said you can't afford to sit around and make the enemy everybody else. You have to take personal accountability. Here's the environment I'm in. What can I do with it? How can I affect and inspire my environment, right? Rather than you be a product of your environment, how do I make the pro the environment a product of who and what I am, right? So it's very easy to label folks out of context a narcissist and all the rest of it. These are powerful, successful people who understand mind science to some degree and know how to program their thoughts and emotions and actions to get a result. Their results are better than yours. Stop hating, please. Hi, Dick. I see you keeping in. Are you muted? I uh, just to say, mine didn't come until eight years later. I was raised in the islands. And uh, yeah, so I'll just be eight years younger. Works for me. Getting old anyway. <laughs> See, this person says, I don't really care about being successful. Well, you can't make a statement like that because successful is relative. Folks come on here and say, Paul, he's poor and broke. He got no job. I say, I'm doing better than ever. I'm financially free and successful with the help of the people. And more importantly, the eternal truth that I speak and live. So just by me being able to make a living off of living in the truth is a success to me. I'm successful. Successful is dependent upon the goal that you set. If you set a goal and you achieve it, you're successful. The difference is most motherfuckers aren't setting goals in their life. They're purposeless on a drift, a drift on an ocean, purposeless with a boat, right? Having no rudder and the ocean is a motion. I've gone over this before, right? We look at ourselves. This is who and what we are in our relationships, relationship. The ocean is a motion. We're adrift with no rudder. Principles and values has to be your rudder or emotions will take you down. Every single time. Purpose over pleasure. It's the same theme. That's successful. Do I hit that mark every time? Absolutely not. Ask Jennifer. I go in there. I'll buy cookies and cake. She's running at five in the morning. She's hot. She's cut up. She's tight. She's 50 years old. I'm grotesque. And I'm 33. So I don't always hit that mark. But I can conceive of a conceptualization and I can describe it where it makes sense in everybody's life, including mine. Do I embody it all the time to the fullest? No, I don't claim to. I'm just saying this is understanding and information that will work for all of us wherever we apply it. Yeah, the world's idea of success is validation from your peers and people that sent, set the benchmarks for you. And I lived a lot of my life that way. And while it was worldly success, I was quite miserable. So I think true success comes from setting your own benchmark, setting your own goals. And and sometimes you even find out those are not what you thought they were. You know, you'll get to them and it's like, that's not actually what I was looking for. But at least you start pointing your own ship and creating your own direction. See, this person, this person, SSTV, said the world's idea of success is inverted. See, there's your problem. You just did it again. Loser thinking is when you sit around looking at everyone else instead of you. What is your idea of success? 
Easy for you to tell me what the world's idea of success is and then condemn it. Great. What's your idea of success? If you can't tell me equally as quick with as much fervor what your idea of success is versus the satanic world, that's why you've given your power away to them rather than to yourself and the truth. Yep. That's where your power lies, where you just externalized. Work in the land sustainably. Stewardship of the land. But that's it, right? Think about it. If you just live by whatever your understanding of success was, it wouldn't even come into your mind what these other motherfuckers are doing. All that would happen was they put something in front of you and you deal with it. You wouldn't even concern yourself for three seconds what Shatan was doing for its version of success because either you could control it or you can't. If you can't control it, why worry about it and cause suffering? Just do your version of success and surrender the rest. That's peace and serenity. That's empowerment. Yeah. It's top of mind for me just because I live so much of my life that way. So I know what keeping up with the Joneses is all about. You know, it's a, I get your point though. Why talk about that? You're manifesting what your goals are. So it's pointless at this point. Yeah. I mean, I'll talk about it to kind of show it how the whole thing's a matrix and we're in a simulation. And then I just go, these are a bunch of weak, cowardly, insecure, disempowered folks who got to group up to get worldly power. I'm more powerful than, than them alone with nothing in a hole because of who and what I am and how I live. Versus them with everything that this world has to offer. I know that to be true. I'm not just saying that. I've experienced it. Right? You take everything from these motherfuckers, they can't influence anybody. They're mumbling, stuttering idiots. Someone like Andy Tate, who they say is scripted, you take everything from him and put him in prison, he will influence his surroundings. It is what it is. From what I've seen. I don't know the man. He could all be a script like Jeffrey and others say, could all be faked. From what I've seen of him, he's a successful man because there's succession going on inside of him. He will influence his surroundings one way or the other. That's power. That's what everybody says they don't want, but they're showing in every area of their life. They're clinging to that. They're wanting that. They're needing that. They're upset when they don't get that. Yeah, I'm talking to Moose and the rest of these folks. Yep. That's the only way you I feel think good about one of the best yourself. things in life is to not owe people. You know, being in debt sucks. And uh, scaling down from the big house in the city and moving to a tiny home in the woods uh, was a goal. And it was, uh, it was one of those goals that really delivered. You know, it's like freed up my time, freed up my ability to be, to be the father I want to be. And, uh, and also be able to work the land and, be closer to nature but a simple life can also be a version of success you know if that's your goal is just to simplify your life it's not going to meet any of the metrics of what anybody else cares about but you really have to be able to go against the the tide so to speak because you'll have a bunch of people around you saying no what are you doing you're you're ruining your life you know you're you're going the wrong direction and then eventually it all comes full circle to where (laughs) They're miserable and they're jealous that you have the time, you have the ability to live your life on your terms. And the truth is they're not willing to make the sacrifices that it takes to have that. And most but this cases, is the you, point, right? You could tell them the roadmap and they'd say, well, I can't do that. What do you mean? Sell, sell everything I have and, and, and throw caution to the wind and just go move to a, a shit shack in the woods. You well, know, no, like Boshani like, was saying last night when he got to drink and he couldn't even believe that we put so little energy and effort into what we do here. Yet to him, he thought there's a whole script and team behind it. It's just because we vanish into the deed. Like the Dow says, we care about what we do. We don't do it for the same motivations you do. Today was the first time he came up with a background and tried to be funny. And it was actually funny. He's usually smarmy and douchey. Then he goes to trying to be himself. And right away, it detracts from what we were doing. That was the first time he put a background up, tried to play with his personality instead of being so serious and miserable. And I laughed my ass off, right? That's the difference. See, when he's a narcissist and wants to be funny and be attractive and entertaining, he can be. But it has to be for a power play. It can't just be because he cares about entertaining and serving others and wanting to be part of something that's fun for him too, right? Always has to be a fucking ulterior motive. Money, views, attention. How about just having fun like Jack Talcott says? How about inspiring yourself and others? How about leaving this place better than how you left it? How about just doing something different than the rest of these lukewarm motherfuckers? 
I don't know. That's how I live, right? And then the other shit comes, right? Is what I've learned. Live like that and the other shit comes. Yeah, I don't know. I've just been reading off the script you gave me all night that the uh, Andrew Tate monologue writers wrote, but. Yeah. That's the thing, man. We got to watch it where everybody's fake. Nothing's real. Can't trust nothing and nobody. We don't need to trust nothing and nobody. Like the man said, listen to what they're saying. Nobody's ever usually completely right. Uh, if you want to use an objective standard to that, but also too, there has to be context and perspective. See, it's easy when you're broken, poor and have nothing and never created nothing to shit on everybody who isn't and has done something, created something worth looking to and admiring on some sense. I'm not saying you got to admire 20 women around a guy or 18 Bugattis. I didn't go to that. Right. I went to if you put this being in all arenas, he will excel. You put some people in all arenas, they lose all the time and get shitty results like Talcott, then complain and then tell me and others they want to help them. Starts a whole website on counseling others, but can't help himself, right? Then wants to be enabled for his weakness and not told the truth. This is exactly what Andy Tate's movement, it's all about from what I've seen with him talking to people on that thing, is stop enabling folks' weakness that leads you to failure rather than succeeding in all areas of your life. The rest of it is ethical determinations, how you want to live your life. Right. Yeah. Imagine your goal is to have acres and acres of land and you could use the same mindset or incorporate some of the positive aspects of his mindset and utilize that to accomplish your goals. Instead of Bugatti's, it's, you know, thousands of agriculture acres, but yet you're hating on it and you're missing the opportunity to actually learn something that could help you accomplish your goals. But that's the point. The only reason they're everyone and the only reason they're trying to make a judgment of what God would say, I get it, of Andy Tate for taking money and buying Bugattis and whatever the fuck he does, because they can't get that money, and they're all sitting there saying what they would do to, with it if they could get it. But because they can't get to it, it's easy to say what they would do with it, right? So, like, ask all the same people, okay, if you worked hard like he did, became a boxer, and then rebranded, whatever that is, and went to talking truth, like how they say with me, how does Paulie start out on the street with law and order and end up with Pizna? Because he's growing and changing and, and, and figuring out different aspects of self that he's exploring, right? Is no one allowed to change and grow and, and become different and, and, and quote-unquote market differently? even though I hate the term marketing because the best marketing is no marketing. I told my father, he goes, I want to put up a billboard. I said, okay, I'm going to put up, have a good day at work slaves and then put my YouTube channel underneath on a big sign right by the highway. You can't do that. Why not? That's the best kind of marketing. No marketing. I'm not going to go on there with my face and go, it's Paulie boy with an apple or something. You know what I mean? I'm going to tell you what the fuck you're going to get when you come here and what I see from the world. Have a good day at work, slaves. Now, what are they going to do? Who is that motherfucker? What is that? How? Why is that there? Who let that stay there? I don't want to be told, have a good day at work, slave, every day on the way to work. Now I'm in you. Now I'm pimping and macking on you. So the one thing I go to do with my vision is the one thing he says I'm not going to do. I can't do that. Can't be a part of that. Why not? Because your feelings are hurt. That's the best marketing. I got you invested emotionally. Off truth. You know, kids are so observant and smart. I was in the city today uh, grabbing some different supplies. And as we were walking into this shop, uh, there was these, it was like Doctors Without Borders people. And they had this marketing spiel where they were just basically going down a script and, and petitioning us for money. And I looked at the person, I said, I love you, but I have a completely different worldview than you. And I'm going to get on with my business. And as we walked off, my boy said to me, you know, Dad, they would have been a lot more uh, compelling if they just would have spoke to you. Why, why did they talk to you like that and like a robot? And I said, take notice, son, you know, take <laughs> notes, because if you ever got to talk to someone, you don't want to do it like that. It comes off really artificial, doesn't it? And I just thought that was kind of in line with what you're saying and, and very observant of my well, boy. Well, that's... That's the thing about professionalism. They talk about professionalism. 
And then they think it means being devoid of personality, mm -hmm. right? Professionalism, the root word is profess, profession. What are you professing with the way that you relate to others? That you're a servant of Shaitan's kingdom? You're devoid of humanity. You, be, you become a biological robot, right? It's exactly where they want everybody. Why? Because the next step is there ain't even people there no more. We just kill all of them and then put machines there. Oops. Seems like there's a lot of coincidences going on. Either that or we're being run from the inside out from the outside. There's an external force that is running us from the inside out based on thoughts, emotions that turn into actions or inactions. Because you got to be professional, right? Well, I, pro I profess to be a child of God, right, Dick? That's what I profess to be. So when you come upon me, whatever I'm doing with a name tag on doesn't change who and what I am as an essence. That's why they told you all. You're non-essential. I agree with them. You don't have the essence. Everywhere I go, you folks are incompetent. You can't even get the right tire for me at Walmart. Then when I ask you what happened, you want to blame the woman up front. There's no accountability and responsibility. There's no real empathy. Oh, sorry. You know, oh, sorry that we didn't get the right thing. I go, save it. Don't say shit you don't mean. You don't give a fuck. If you gave a fuck, you'd make sure it wouldn't happen and wouldn't blame the woman up front just because you ain't up there. You'd make sure it got done. That's leadership. See, I don't sit in the warehouse and go, that ain't my job. I go, this is my warehouse now. If something ain't happen in here, I must be part of it. What can I do to make it happen and do it better? That's an employee somebody loves because you're thinking for them. The rest of these motherfuckers go, I don't. I know what I need to know and nothing more because I don't really care. And if that ain't my department and it doesn't happen, I have nothing invested in this place because it ain't mine. I don't own it. That's a loser mentality. You're okay working for a place that fails? You want to be part of a team that fails? You're okay with that. Because it ain't your job, right? It ain't your department, right? You just showed who and what the fuck you really are and don't even know it and want to blame the owner. This you is what everyone on the, does. The non-liable corporation. And no one uh, has any liability down the chain, right? Everyone's escaping liability. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead, sir. No, that's the truth. That's the whole model. That's the whole design. Uh, everybody can escape liability which they really don't because look at the world we end up with when you have a bunch of non liable liable people running running shit uh they do a horrific terrible job but even if you do work for a corporation it doesn't mean you have to act in the capacity of non liability you can still take liability eventually you're probably going to work yourself out of that but see the man doesn't try to avoid liability the man looks for liability and then solves a problem that's the difference you saw a panel of motherfuckers over there who wouldn't solve an obvious problem. You got a problem with me? Address me. You didn't do that. You did everything but that. You tried to run from all the liability. All I did was try to solve a problem. I looked for the liability and I took on the responsibility. I took a motherfucker who was a liability and gave him responsibility and you saw what happened. Right? So that's exactly the point. We got a world of motherfuckers who want to avoid liability. And we got some folks who step up and say, I'll take on the liability. Paul, he's so dumb and stupid. He'll go to jail and get killed for standing on rights and freedoms. We would never do that. What an idiot. Because you'll avoid responsibility and accountability and liability everywhere in your life. Because you're a punk ass, duplicitous coward of bad faith. See, I'm good faith. So I want to solve problems. I want to be better. I want to do what's true and what's right. That's a man. Yeah, people will say there's this entitlement mentality, like it's a negative connotation. I look at it as positive in the sense that, well, I am response able. I am account able. I am entitled to the land. I'm the motherfucker that should be in stewardship of that process because I'm not a corporation. I'm not looking at it in a non liable sense. I'm looking at it and how can I do it with a sense of sustainability and so that everything I do. Uh, can go right back into the process and be broken down and, and not cause loss, harm, and injury to someone who's a mile down from me or, you know, uh, 20 miles down on a, on, a, on a watershed. Hey, why do you think these women don't respect these men? Because every time these women have a problem, these men can't help them solve it. They go to fighting and running. 
I've seen it a million times. I've seen it with Jennifer's bozos that she realizes now, she, you know, she's not sorry for it, but I could tell she realizes now, like we all do, we co-create with a bunch of goofies because we're a bunch of goofies. Don't know our worth, right? So you got a bunch of men who can't even help a woman solve a problem, get emotional, go to fighting and running, trying to avoid liability, go to lying and cheating instead of just owning the shit, right? Folks don't even want to mind their own business, let alone own shit that might affect someone else, right? That goes back to the other side of it. I had a dude I worked for was a business owner tell me all about success every day. He's studying. He knows all about success, but would show up midday, right? Wouldn't have a stake at what was actually going on in the ground. And I explained to him one day, you want to run a business and think you're going to be the last one uh, uh, to be here in the morning and the first one to leave? That's not how it works. Someone who owns a business has more invested than the people he expects to run his business. You know the kind of world we live in. These are lazy motherfuckers. So if you want to run a business, you better be the first motherfucker here in the morning and the last one to leave if you want to succeed. You don't roll in midday, stay for an hour and leave because you're big chimping. That's someone who don't want to take on the liability and responsibility and accountability. You want other motherfuckers to run it for you. Guess where it went? Down the drain. Because they all stole from him, fucked up the books, didn't do what they were supposed to on the ground, and his name was backed on it. I don't do that. I don't put my name on shit and let other motherfuckers fuck it up for me. If it's going to get fucked up, it's going to be me that does it. Because I want the accountability and responsibility. I don't want to be pissed off that somebody else fucked up my shit because I gave them the responsibility I wouldn't take on. That pissed me off even more at myself, Right? But they don't got that kind of ethic and accountability and self-reflection. Yeah, if you're willing, to, if you're delegating something you're not willing to do, it's going to create resentment between you and the, the person, people you're working with. It's not leadership. That's the thing. Folks want to be taken seriously, have their business taken seriously by the folks working there and then show no leadership and keep the morale up. You wouldn't fight. You wouldn't listen to a leader in a battle if he didn't ride in front of you into the battle. When the shit gets hot, this motherfucker never rode once. <laughs> He's up in the cooled cabin drinking iced tea with the maps telling us what to do. The morale shakes at some point. It breaks. The only leadership that matters is like they used to say George Washington. I wasn't there. I don't know what he did. But from what I understand, what that way they tell it, he rode in the front. You want to be a leader? Lead, motherfucker. When it's time to go to battle, you ride up front, not behind everybody. They don't want that accountability and responsibility. They want to fake it till they make it, and then once they make it, they want to forget where they came from. Yeah, and wouldn't it be nice if you could find people that, rather than expect you to lead, they'll walk beside you in the battle, you know, or not walk, but they'll charge beside you in the battle. They're not looking for someone else to do the work. And in that case, you know, there's always an alpha in every group. I mean, it's just the, the way nature works. But that doesn't mean people got to sit there and trail behind someone else to trailblaze for them and, and cut through the brush and do all the heavy lifting. That's not partnership. That's not uh, co-creating collaborative efforts. That's just people... The point Reaching is off Dick, somebody right? else's blood, sweat, and tears. You could look at it that way, but look at it like this, right? The tip of the spears, like it, like they do this bullshit, like the yeah. tip of the spear, right? In yeah. every group dynamic, if you want to call it hierarchical, there's going to be a natural balancing. If everybody's ego is out of the way, if everyone's working as one force, there's going to be a natural hierarchy that shows itself, right? So now the person up front, is going to be the most dynamic and fluid personality that shows promise in all areas. And then as you go, it's going to go less and less. But hopefully, if you got a good group around you, not too much so that it affects the whole group, right? But there's always going to be in every area, right? Baseball, basketball, bowling, pick something, chess. So when we get into personality, it's no different, right? What someone knows, how they can employ that knowledge how they can inspire a group and motivate and keep morale up. If you can do that, you can do that. If you can't, you can't. So there's a natural separation there, right? 
So that tip of that spear is always going to be decided based on who that being is. Not what they have. That was the original point of a God King, right? Everybody there said this motherfucker is for that place. The tip of the spear. Because he leads. Right? He wouldn't call an order that he wouldn't do himself. Matter of fact, he would do it himself before he'd call an order. Because he know how that looks. He would, he would prefer to not call an order. And if he did, he would call an order that was lesser than what he would do. Because it shows grace and humbleness. Right? Really fucked up shit. You don't call the order for you. Do it yourself. That's leadership. They don't want that. You see it in our political structure. It's like this now. You got all the inferior motherfuckers at top who can't lead. And you got all the folks at the bottom who are full of light, who could lead, who are being demonized and labeled. So you got (laughs) folks at the top like this calling hits that they wouldn't take on themselves. All the Cheneys and Bushes and all the rest. They never fought a battle in their life. They ran from the draft. But they want to call hits on whole nations, right? And get folks who are down in the trenches killing and being killed to do their dirty work. Because we don't have the self-knowledge and self-worth. We take on the shit. We have to look for personal qualities to define leadership and 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 and, and appropriate imports. Import, right? Importance. We have to appropriate that properly based on spiritual personality, supernatural traits. It's not a play for ego, alpha, beta, all that bullshit. It's self-evident. Yeah, man. 100%. That's why every time one of those folks steps up, one of those tips Mm -hmm. of the spear folks, who's dynamic and excellent in every area and competent, they always go to try to cut it off. Because they know in this society, everyone, the more you go farther back from that being is less and less competent. We don't have a group of folks who are tight with that that tip of that spear. You cut the tip of the spear off and everyone, it doesn't matter. It's the closest far back from that is still way incompetent, right? You take Andy Tate as an idea. We don't know who and what he is, whatever. You go to the second guy in command, then the third guy, it immediately drops off, right? There's him, his brother, and then the third guy immediately drops off. All they got to do is cut him and his brother and everything else falls away. Mm-hmm. Right? That's why our communities and societies fail. Because we got tips of spears who, as soon as they rise to the occasion, they get cut. And the ones right behind them are completely incompetent in most of their affairs. They just want to be like Andy Tate, but they're not really willing to put the work in. Or they yeah, hate him because they don't see where the power is, right? In the truth. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an organization, right, Dick? You go to any one of these gang drug organizations, top dude might be thorough. Second guy, okay. As soon as you get to number three and then down the chain, everybody folds. And then the guy on top goes with them. Every time. Right? One guy's been there 30 years. Solid. Second guy, 15, 20. Pretty solid. Getting there. Third guy gets everybody fucked over. Right? You don't have to go that far down the train to see that that it'll get the whole thing fucked up because there's no accountability and responsibility. What'd you do? Yeah, he was the one in charge of all of it. Boom. Cut the tip off the spear. Every time they they cut the head off the snake every time because there's no loyalty to truth. Everybody's identify with their body and saving their own ass. They don't ride for ideals. Well, you know, people will hate me saying this, I'm sure, but if you look at masonry, they have a very strong vetting process. You know, it's like a ball club. People don't climb up. And, I, and I, you know, I understand that the, the vision is flawed. I'm not a fan of masonry. I'm not a mason. But I do say, as always, I learn from everything, everything I study. And if there's anything positive, well, there's actually a couple of things I'd say that are positive there you could take away. But that would be one thing is they don't put people in positions that haven't properly risen up through that order and haven't been vetted on many levels. Yeah. Well, that's why I said I took full accountability because the, the example would be I and the moose. If I'm the tip of the spear, my number two guy got my head cut off. 
metaf- metaphorically, right? All you had to do was go to the number two guy. The problem is I'm the one who assigned the quote unquote number two guy. If you want to look at it that way, because I did give him the moderator, right? So that would be the, that would be the, you know, if we like, we're doing the simulation, right? It doesn't mean nothing to me at this point. I'm just saying we do the simulation. That's my number two guy. Cause I gave him the, the, the baton. I gave him the power and then it's my fault because I did that. I should have gave it. Well, I did give it to wizard. But that's the thing, right? It's like Wizard's a number two person. He's never going to do that. So the fact that I gave Moose any power, knowing that he was a soy boy, because I let him on some level emotionally manipulate me because I cared about him and liked him. So I let him, I figured, you know what? I don't, we don't have to agree, but he's never going to break that bad off me. Turns out, you know, I, my, I was the fool again. So, Yeah. Um, you can't blame the underlings. See, this comes back to liability, responsibility, and accountability. Even when the underlings fuck up, you can't blame them because they're unaccountable and irresponsible. They know not what they do. The leader gets blamed again because he's the one who put them there, right? See how it works? The ones under will never take the accountability, responsibility. The leader always has to take that. He has no option. He says, it's my fault because I'm the one I'm the one who put you there. I should have known that you were going to fold. You weren't built for that. That was my fault. Yeah. I don't know how we got off on all that. Let's go back to Andy. And then let's wrap up. How, how over are we? 45 minutes over. More Andy. Let's trigger Jeffrey and Thomas and others. <laughs> and, uh, it gave it inspired, uh, it inspired an interesting uh, back and forth. Repartee. Hold on, hold on. I'm not on share no more. Slave share. Sports car, the y'all, and a one. Look at your life. The right attitude is competent enough in the sphere where you don't get wrecked. It's the same as anything. If you're going to go fight, if you become competent at it, you won't get your ass kicked. If you don't, you will. If you're going to go open a business, if you become competent at it, you'll make money. If you don't, you won't. If you're going to date women, become good at it. You can't just give up on it completely. It doesn't make you smarter than anyone else. In fact, quite the opposite. If you're only going to do things you're passionate about and do things you want to do instead of getting up and struggling, doing things you're supposed to do because you have a duty to God and to yourself, you are going to be a loser forever. That's the reason you're all poor. You're competing against people like me. We do not waste a second. You have to understand that life is war. It's a war for the female you want. It's a comp- Free, I, Jeffrey, I heard you make a noise back there. You didn't like that. Oh, I'm just giggling. Uh, I know. You, you, you have to waste just, a second. I just... That's it's the reason like you're a- poor, Jeffrey. While you and Brian O'Shea are masturbating in a car somewhere, <laughs> chasing women around to tell them you're retaining semen, bro. In uh, 2005, I made a half a million dollars by doing nothing. Like when when Tate was in fucking diapers, like <laughs> I'd already been around the world, you know, successful at a lot of things then, and I never stopped settling for bullshit in my life. And I did whatever the fuck I want, and I'm doing whatever the fuck I want right now. And so, you know, this guy, this kid with CTS, with his fucking dollar store, like motivational speaking fucking points, it's like Goggins shit. It's like it's it, it addresses all of society, like all the uh, little like um, it's like, oh, don't be a beta, you know, like fuck uh, feminists. You know, it's like it's all those things that just everyone's talking about right now. And it's this. This new type of Joe Rogan, you know, so like are you down with feminism guy, then? Guy down with- all, these, all these boys can look up to because he's buff and he's punched people in the face and knocked them out and like what about says, the orphanage really, he built that he didn't tell nobody about? But he's kind of just like, you know what, <laughs> what about the orphanage he built that he didn't tell nobody about? They they didn't even know about until fucking some media person found out about. He built an or- orphanage and didn't tell nobody. And somebody secretly found out about and it. He probably told you that, right? You know, no, I mean, oh, oh, someone, someone, he can't someone win. He can't win. He can't win. He can't win. He can't win because there's always a reason why 
you know. No, because you don't know There's anything. Reason reason why. Why. You don't know shit. You don't know anything about Tate. You only know what he's put I out. Don't. I've already I explained. You're right. And you, you said you looked at, and you said you looked at, at nothing at what he's put out. So you're right. I've looked at what he's put out, what he says, and how he carries himself. You and you think it's, it's mind blowing shit, you Paul and I didn't you say I didn't. What, why are you? Shit. You're you're doing it again. This is what narcissists do. I'll Daddy. do the master class again. You just like took an idea, Daddy. blew it up to make a mischaracterization Paul, to try to equalize on what I'm talking do? about. It's a when did I say this was mind blowing information? Everyone has narcissistic tendencies. It doesn't mean it's something. But narcissistic when did I say that this was <laughs> mind blowing information, or did I just say that he's making you're, some points here and there that are triggering making, everyone, and you got triggered? You're playing a video of his one liners, all like yeah, this and it was channel, enough to get so you, you emotionally triggered. Good. Emotional uh, damage. That's what the guy says down there in the, in the, in the, in the I'm chat not, room. In the chat now, he always types that every time I yell at somebody. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> All this guy is saying is take accountability and responsibility for your life and be a powerful, inspiring being. Right. So I don't see I'm why you have to about everybody else's emotions. A bunch of other bullshit on top of it. But. <sighs> But he is he not the entitled to live how bullshit. he pleases if he's doing he what's true and what's right and succeeding? He just bullshit. said he built an orphanage that he you told him about. Did uh, Andy send you an email and tell you about the orphanage to release it on this broadcast so he could get credit for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what do psychos do to try and offset the fact that they he know can't win? Psychos. He can't they win. I, yeah, I know. Like now, you're doing this to me already now, so that's why I have to now I have to align myself with the likes of Andy Taint. Because there's no one else out there who's successful in speaking truth and not worrying about soy boy's feelings. Right. And now, like, we find strange bedfellows in a time of war, huh? Well, soy boys is definitely uh, a propaganda, you know, kind of a divisive word. Um, You're right. It, it can be. It's really just to describe overly emotional, hypersensitive, feminine like, triggered men. Like they, like they say, they don't want to hear about all the rodents and, 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 and ground squirrels and shit that were killed while, while plowing the fields to grow their beans. Eh? Oh, did well, you watch my video? I, I don't eat. Yeah. I don't see. Yeah, I don't. But I don't video. eat any living things. So just because I don't eat anything <laughs> that's not, not an animal or meat doesn't mean that I eat soy and I'm estrogenated. No, Paul, <laughs> about a video I made. He watched one of my videos that I made today. Yeah, I checked it. I checked him out a little bit. Did, well, did I he not was he point? was bitching about the ground squirrels, and now you're gonna well the ground <laughs> no, squirrels. No, are gonna have to, and you, it was talking about vegan, yeah, yeah, vegans, and, yeah, the vegans and what they what they don't see, they don't they don't as long as it don't hurt, as long as they don't see it, it don't matter. <laughs> Ted Nugent was trying to say that that vegans eat kill more animals than meat eaters, <laughs> <laughs> and that that soy. Soybean, like you have to basically kill all the animals in the ecosystem around any garden. I can't believe what you folks will argue about huh? on fucking so Ted Nugent. It's that well, it is true it's, though. It's Joe Rogan it's a true cult statement. Cult fucking group it's thing. A true statement. Yeah, it's yeah, a true well, statement. Just imagine, Paul, if you're plowing, if yeah, you're plowing if you 10, feel, if, 15 if you acres run, of field. How many rats beans. and how many snakes and how many fucking bees? Many You're actually talking about that they don't have water system. I'm not, I'm not buying that one. I'm not I mean, saying that, that I'm just discounting it, but I'm not buying that. So Jesse, to to produce one pound of vegetables for a human takes like I've got one, to kill one animal. Yard. Hold on, I just got to kill one chicken. But you're gonna go out there and kill fucking no. <laughs> 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 one, one, one bison to feed your family for the whole year. Times the amount of plant material. So yeah, hey, I don't I don't know nothing about percent of the soy goes towards towards uh bro cattle. you can't take so. you can't take a dynamic that encompasses all of us and break it down to you killing a chicken to eat tonight. <laughs> Can you imagine eight billion morbidly <laughs> obese slaves piling meat <laughs> into a truck to get to everyone daily? Like, let's get real about this. What we're talking about when we zoom out here as like an actual simulation of hey. this complete. You know what else I heard though? Back to stewardship of the land, accountability, <laughs> hey, and responsibility. If one of if they said if if one out of every three households had had three chickens, that it would totally eliminate the egg industry and and, and billions and billions of pounds of waste. <laughs> 
<laughs> you really believe that? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. From the chicken farms of laying the eggs, right? All the mass production of eggs and all the all the cartons and, and all that waste. What are the people in the city going to do? I mean, I can argue both sides. They story. have them in the cities now. They Let have chickens in the this, fucking Jeffrey. city now. I want to get back to Tate. I want to get back to the Ooh. Tate Tards. Oh, fuck. Tate Tards. Uh, <laughs> so, if Annie decided to go one night on a flight with uh, Andy, Andy Tate, Mm -hmm. Like, let's say, like, they're just friends, right? Would you be worried at all about Annie and what she would do if she went on the flight with Andy Taint off to the no. Maldives? Not at all. <laughs> like, yeah. a slap. Not you wouldn't be worried way. at all. Not so uh, you're just uh, so secure in yourself and, and your value and status. No, I know Allie. Okay. Oh, just so you're just counting on her thinking he's equally as douchey as you, so hating both of you. Yeah. Okay. He went with I was I'm kidding, Jeffrey, sort of. But you went with it there, so I just look like an <laughs> asshole. But that's good. So for something for folks out there to catch on to. When I go to set you up, just ride with it, and then I look like the mm -hmm. asshole. So that he doesn't <laughs> uh all right. I, again, I'm just asking some questions. You know, you no, that Ryan shit. O'Shea, if Annie went, because Annie's now your girlfriend, part time, <laughs> your girlfriend, but you keep her at Jeffrey's house, right? Right. Um, <laughs> would you be worried about her getting on the plane with Andy Taint? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you I would. Mean, <laughs> I, I love that. Depends on, you know, what we got, what we've been talking about, how we want to roll like that. But uh, I mean, let's um, not get ourselves. I think we both know what going down at that point like i mean no he, he, and Allie agree that that's okay then you know but i don't from what i see he, hey from what i've heard from all the bitches that been out there seeing him he's actually a respectful <laughs> dude bro from all the from all the interviews like you, all, right? the all the bitches that, that have been out there hang out with yeah, all the bitches <laughs> <laughs> hey all <laughs> the bitches i talk to they report no that he's no, no 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 no, the he bitches on the might on the, not have too high of a self esteem, Jesse. The bitches on TikTok that went out to go see him, that he invited oh. out to go see him. Oh. All of them talk about how he was such a gentleman right. and all the shit, and he didn't make no pass at him. He's not a gentleman, Jesse. He's married, like, that's but he's. I'm saying he could be the saying? super nice. Anyone who's in the public has to be nice to fucking everyone. Listen, okay. I'm here to testify. I saw a video. Andy Tate's a gentleman. He opened the door and said, "Hey, bitch, open Enjoy the door for." And and she walked in, right? He even held the door for her. Opened the door and held it for her. So. Yeah, I was speaking like you guys. I'm stuff. tired, bro. You guys got me tired, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it. Uh, start to talk fucking with illegitimate fucking. Go ahead, Paul. Play Tate. Or, or Tate. Andy? Or, or, every chick's trying, every man's trying to get her. It's a war for the car you want. It's a war for the money you want. It's a war for the status. It's a war. Ma masculine life is war. If you're a man who doesn't view life as war, you're going to lose. <laughs> you're going to lose, Jeffrey. Oh, boy. <laughs> hey, show the clip where he gets knocked retro out. Retroactively lose somehow. Go back and <laughs> in the future and ruin my life. After show all, the clip you know. So you're saying you're already a loser. So it is no, <laughs> since it's already the case. <laughs> Uh, you can't go back and you don't believe it's going to change. So nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm starting to like Jeffrey. I don't know how I was intent on not liking him, but he's just somehow he's, he's really good at what he does. He's better than Eric Boshane. He's better than the Moose. He's better than all of them. All right. If you folks would learn something from Jeffrey or you wouldn't have you as many you? problems. Putting me in with uh, those guys. I, don't know, <laughs> Jeffrey, I worry better. about you sometimes, Jeffrey. I worry. Maybe uh, you're gonna break that on me. I don't know. I haven't. I haven't figured them out yet either, bro. I watched a couple of videos. I still. I still haven't got them. I'm, I'm not like these dudes that come on your show. He's a Where's swinger, Padini, man? Get Padini in here. Padini's been begging me on social media for some kind of interaction. He needs. He needs his fix. <laughs> He's tagged me 65 times the last <laughs> three weeks, and then he calls me obsessive. It's absolutely insane. Well, he's finally ready to get into it. He told me on a Facebook post today he's finally ready to talk about 
all the horrible right. things that have happened to him and work on the trauma. So I finally oh, you said that. Uh, yes, but I fought. See, because I had see, I have to grind these folks' egos down in public for like six months before they finally come correct. And he goes, "All right, fine. We'll talk about all the abuse and my personality dude, and everything." Because he just will talk to anyone who pays attention to him. He no, that's fine, but he knows my attention and where it goes. So um, let's get him in here. I'll I'll hit him up. We'll get on him. He's all. I mean, he's constantly tagging me, so I'm sure Folks he's standing by for my response. They but... need more Padini because he's on the Great Work <laughs> Network with Larkin Rose and Mark Passio. No, I literally. Why? I I, uh, I asked him, and he said, "Why?" He said, "Why do you think he has any of those guys up there?" And I said, uh, "It's not exactly." Uh... All right, hold some on. Confusion. Wait. There's some confusion. It would seem. Is one zero one of those guys or no? Yeah, where's one zero, man? Is he still up here? He said he he's uh blessings all tired. Hey, Polly Pop. I put a link in there too, this Andrew Tate video. It's fucking hilarious. He's uh sitting there with this guy, Aiden Ross, and he's he's sitting in a robe and he's got his legs like spread. He's like hovering <laughs> over the dude playing chess. I don't know, I just found it fucking hilarious. Am I gonna get copyrighted for that? You know, yes. Yeah. Don't put it on. You probably will. Check it out. He's just hating. He just don't want to watch it, so he's trying to use copyright to get to me. Yeah, what's up with that, know. Jeffrey? That ain't right. I don't. I don't know what would be copyrightable, and it maybe yes, if they're Justin, using it Jesus in the Christ. Did anybody look at my videos? Link. Here's the link. <laughs> <laughs> now, yes, now. Did anybody look at any of my videos? Oh, you're you got a live <laughs> line to Panini or Dick? You got you okay, got a yeah, live videos. You have a live line to Padini. Dick's pretty talented. Like one he's of those coming. red phones, like the right White now. House, where you just pick it right up and he's on there. Jesus. The red phone. Red phones, like the right White now. House, where you just pick it right up. And he's oh, on that there. doesn't work. Who is that? Cherie, is that you, man? Please. Yes. Oh, you gotta go to the other screen and turn off your phone. Oh, that's yeah, but we got feedback, Cherie. Is that you, man? I think that's you. Oh, we're in a loop now. Mute yourself, I figured it out, so I finally got on here. Oh, you're in a loop now. Mute yourself. Shit, is that my bad? Oh, you're in a loop now. Mushrooms are kicking in. <laughs> what, man? Hey, man, stop looping, man. What, man? Hey man, stop looping, man. Hey man, stop looping, man. Looping, looping. Looping, looping. Right. Right. Come on, Dude, what's up with that? Fix your shit. I have you're a response. Looping, from you're looping. You got to get your tech together. I want to hear. There we go. Me. Come on now. Shut this down. Someone says. Shut it all down. It's over. Let's yeah, give it out. It's too late. <laughs> what now? He says it's too late. It's too late. A bitch. Yeah. All right. I guess final words. Let's wrap up. And uh, we'll come back Thanks tomorrow. Okay. Well, you know, if you go read my article, okay, okay. Andy takes bad because he's successful and buys stuff, right? Who's this Cherie woman? Cherie. Look out, look out, Cherie. Who are you? Hey, Paul. Thanks for having me up. Thanks for another great broadcast. Appreciate everyone on the panel. Y'all Thank you, Mr. Dick. Adios, amigo. Always Thanks for pleasure. Bad. Dick is always a pleasure. Likewise. Talented man. Make Taint great again. Yes. We're making him great again. <laughs> Jeffrey just can't. He can't. He can't let one thing go by without.
Oh, go ahead. See, this is why Andy has a broadcast and you folks don't. Because I don't say anything in this dead silence. I want to hear more. I'm going to say something. Yeah. You ready? Tainted love. Tainted love. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. So, what's the guy's name that had had the zygote deal? And the was he giving you a liquor license or something? Uh, he can't give me no license. What is he going to give me a license to do? I mean, what something a picture? I don't know what it was. <laughs> it's or, a credential uh, card. It's a credential card. Oh, I already I, have. Oh, one. Okay, I used it today. I already have one. Oh, okay. See? Yeah, I'm just going to reinforce. Oh, there you go. I'm just going to reinforce that. I'm. I don't know if you remember. I told you that. Each time, uh, about 10 minutes after conception, I knew when each of my child, uh, three children were conceived, which is weird. So there's something to that, spark of life and all that. He's giving me a zygote time. license. Yeah, I, that's a, I'm backing up his zygote theory. It's a fact. Which was right uh, at. It was like kind of like you know you remember like when 9/11 happened or whatever. Each time that after that, I knew they were conceived. I don't know how. Well, the thing is, right? Like I was a zygote, but most of these folks are zy sheep, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's a little bit of a, a zy sheep, yeah, creature in there, a little different creature formation. Yeah. Anyway, I was going to throw that in there. Uh, spark up the conversation, but it looks like it's about to close out anyway. What does this guy want? What do you want, Rob Cleveland? Where can I get one of those what? His nogs. Oh, cards. Mm -hmm. Oh, slave card? Is pink dog slave card? Not vegan? Well, if you sign up for my new TikTok program, $50 a month, I and Andrew <laughs> Taint and by Andrew Taint, I mean a cardboard life-size cutout of him will be next to me while I describe to you how to get that card. Uh, You're going to make him the same size as you? <laughs> He's wow. bigger than me, that dude, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. You all can talk shit about Andy Taint. I don't go to disrespecting men when I'm not in their face. So <laughs> Andy Taint might yeah. fuck me up. He's a kickboxer. He'll probably he'll mount Jeffrey. He's a world class. You could fall. You could he will mount him. Jeffrey and pull on his ponytail. He's a Trust me. Oh my god! That's it. He's a world Guys, champion kickboxer. Can't take his so woman. What? So what if he was a kickboxer? He's a world champion He's been kickboxer. Fucking knocked out a bunch of times and his brain doesn't work right. Oh yeah. <laughs> One way to find out. Bet He's you'll still... beat you in chess. I bet you'll fuck your bitch. <laughs> <laughs> already, I'm already been challenged by some carnivore diet. Don't do that, Jesse. Don't do that <laughs> ego posturing. Don't bring Annie into this. She's pure as the driven snow. How dare you? Bugatti. You got a Bugatti. <laughs> He's got a Bugatti. Oh, oh my god. god. He's got pets. I'm gonna look, at it, look at pictures of him flexing all day. He's got <laughs> testosterone. Oh my god. I <laughs> I just agree with the spiritual out. I just I just agree with the spiritual out, out, outlook on stuff. You know, everything that I, 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 I resonates with it, except for the the Muslim part. But you know, he has a right. good. I'm yeah. glad at least you disagree with one thing he says. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like to put myself in a in a in a box on, on this plane. You know, of existence. I don't claim. I don't like to claim nothing of this. So. I can't yeah. do nothing. <laughs> but whatever. All right. Paul, if you, if you talk like Andrew Tate all, all day, I'd never watch the show. <laughs> well, that's so the thing. That, that could be like either take that as a compliment or something. <laughs> I would watch the show. If, if, so you're if saying I need to be more manly. If, I'm ident if you're identifying with me, then I need to be more manly like Andy Tate so I can be successful. I'm, I'm not start talking I'm not, like him all the time so I can be manly and successful. And if I have to lose you, that's what I'm going to do. The only thing is it sounds like, you know, living in California rat race, a lot of it, you know. If I have to always come on California. here with a Bugatti, if I have to come on here with a Bugatti, right? 
and piss you off, Jeffrey. I will. <laughs> like it's, just private, it's, just yeah, not, right. it's just not as deep as I mean it's it's like okay he's got a lot of attention and he's saying some good things but it's just not as deep as you're giving him credit for no I'm just saying like if I I could see a world where you know I do good things in my life and I am more and more successful and financially free and independent, and I'm able to do good things with that. I, and if once in a while Andy Taint wants to pick me up on the plane and fly around a little bit and smoke some reefer, I'm not going to stop him from coming to pick me up on the plane and fly around and smoke reefer. You know, I might not even like him. Like a lot of folks here, I'll say, hey, Andy Taint, I don't even really like you a lot of the time, <laughs> but uh, I respect you and what you've done and, you know, your thinking. Uh, and what, what you create? I made a half. Well, I don't know. I haven't looked enough into him. I'm still doing it. Actually, hard to to make money and to become somebody. Not. I didn't just make a couple of videos and get famous overnight like that guy. Like, what did he do exactly? That's so amazing. Besides, I don't know. A, he was a world class champion kickboxer. <laughs> so, uh, wasn't what didn't Joe Rogan? Uh, he didn't totally just come city. famous overnight. He was a fucking world class famous kickboxer. No, <laughs> so what Jeffrey's saying is that if he didn't see it on the internet, it didn't happen. So he just presumes that the guy you see in front of you is the guy who was always there, right? So, so he was a, a human punching bag. That's what that's what he did. That's oh. so great. So it doesn't, oh, take, it, it doesn't take a certain level of will and dedication and discipline right. and fortitude to get in the ring over and over and get results. Yeah. Most of those guys are autists. They're aut they have autism. They don't understand, uh, you know, danger and shit like that. You, so you that might describe why I'm here then. I might <laughs> just be autistic. So if me and Andy <laughs> take and bond, if me and Andy take and bond over being autistic, and and the moose being a scared little bitch and everyone else yeah. being a scared little bitch about standing on rights and freedoms, then me and Andy Tate are going to do that. Fear? What is Talk fear? We're both birds. autistic, and we don't <laughs> understand danger. We're danger. Well, can you identify a time like, you know, with Joe Rogan, you could identify the day he said, I'd sell my mother for wealth or something like that, uh, and then immediately oh, I wouldn't even two get months on a later. With Joe Rogan. If Who's I got on a Spotify, plane, if Rogan was on there, I'd say I have to get off this plane. I don't even want to be on the same plane. <laughs> you wouldn't go to his podcast? I mean, no. Huh? Well, no, I'd go to anybody's podcast only to light the room on fire and shit on him uh, oh, indirectly, yeah. subliminally, and see how far I could get with him. Because I'm a gambler. That'd be awesome. I like to fuck with be. people who can kick my ass. I don't know. You know, and then see if I can. That's why you that. wouldn't get on there. Yeah, I wouldn't get on there because I'm too much of a liability, right? I'm a chimpanzee in this media. Right. They don't bring me in almost anywhere, especially more and more going forward. I just kind of alienate myself from everybody because they go, uh, he's a loose cat and he's unpredictable. If we bring him in here and act like a slave, he's going to he's going to say something. No, there's, something. A, there's a tipping point where it'll change. Maybe you just can't give up, you know, because it's just it's just there's a tipping point. All right. So Joe for Rogan, the people and for myself. Convincing for the Joe truth? Rogan to become a truther? Is that what no, you're saying? No, fuck Joe Rogan. I don't, I'm not going to convince him to do nothing. <laughs> no, I for, myself, it, it was a... for myself, the experience, the truth, and the people, I would go on Joe Rogan podcast and light it on fire, but I wouldn't probably talk to him before or after because I don't really yeah. have any respect for him. You know? <laughs> yeah. I've seen him yeah. completely do a 180 on shit, and it wasn't out of, like, learning and growing. It was clearly oh, out of him does. being a little bitch and not want to make enemies. But I if am. you're righteous and stand in truth, you don't, you don't, you're not afraid to offend. You know, someone. Yeah, that's why you'd never get him on that subject. Him. Rogan changes with every every person he has on. He changes his his what he talks about, what he says, and he contradicts himself all the time. P people watching, are you talking to yourself down there in chat, telling me what I think and feel, or what? It's interesting. I think about going on Joe Rogan's podcast. No, I don't. How dare you say everyone everyone does and would. You know what I think? You think I sit around in this fucking trailer and think about going on Joe Rogan's podcast? 
I may have done the simulation in my head of going on everybody's broadcast, and the simulation always goes the same, same way it always does. Who said that? Because I am who I am, <laughs> so it always goes the same. We're going to vibe over truth, and he's going to submit to the truth in front of me, or I'm going to light the room on fire. It's pretty simple. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> but I don't It'd see only last it happening. 10 minutes, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of like but, Andy Tate for now. For now, I like him. You're Andy not going to convince me not to like him. I only, I even, one of the big reasons I like him because no one else does. So that's the Everyone easiest way to get him. What are you talking about? No, everyone's trying him. to get him canceled and shut down, and the Matrix attacked him. That's I saw it on TMZ. Don't lie to me, Jeffrey. That's I'm plugged plan. right in. I'm informed. <laughs> TMZ, dude, come on. Don't fall for that bullshit. That's just an MK Ultra move. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rip Joe Rogan. He's an expert on like, on like PSYOPs and MK Ultra because YouTube told him. Bro, <laughs> you're talking about watching TV. <laughs> I don't watch TV. I have it for 10 years. I don't TMZ watch is movies. TV. I don't watch anything. I don't have Netflix. TMZ I don't do none of TV. it. Just because it's kind of on the internet too doesn't mean it's not TV. No, I was just kidding. I didn't really see it on TMZ. I went to hit breaking news and it showed Andy. That was the breaking news, right? I was keeping up on slavery for the broadcast. And it was Andy being being wheeled out, right? Being walked out by all the agents. A photo, at a photo oh, yeah. shoot. Totally scripted oh, photo shoot. They, that was what it was? They did a photo shoot? No, he's saying there were the, the pho photographers were there. The yeah, Jeffrey's going to gonna be doing the same thing to me when they walk me out. He's gonna go. Oh if, man, if, saddest if thing you happened today. To mainstream, and you become a very an extremely divisive person. Yeah, I will. Uh, <laughs> have you not seen what's gone over the last couple of weeks? No. Have you not seen what's going on? I happen to be that, a very divisive personality. Apparently, I've been told. That's that's not the divisive I'm talking about. <laughs> You're speaking the truth. I'm talking about people speaking non-truths and being divisive and being divisive just to be divisive. <laughs> Just to continue the whole two party paradigm of libs hating, of uh, you know, like everyone hating each other because of whatever minor differences and beliefs that they have. When really we're all the fucking same. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, I, I always look at someone again when I see everyone coming in confederation against them, I give them a second look. And then yeah, but no when I listen to what they're saying and I look at what they're doing as opposed to what's already out there, you could say it might be a lesser of an evil, but I'd rather have Andy Tate running around because he seems like he just wants to live his life and be free and be left alone <laughs> and be empowered and successful. I may not agree with his ethics, but he's not one of these simping soy boy collectivists who wants to force his way on me. Right. So well, I'd rather be on a plane with Andy Tate than the rest of these folks who were up under me for the last year because they'd fold on me in a second. Andy might do some time for the truth based on I, what uh, I think about his personality. I don't know the guy, though. It's all a projection. Like you say, it could all be a character. That, I think that's some what level connect is between what I believe and what you believe is. I don't believe what he puts out is his authentic self. I think he's putting out what he, his a projection of what he wishes he he is and i don't i don't respect that so i don't respect that i i respect <laughs> people who are out there being this this thing not someone who's just making youtubes of what they wish they were doing well he made money and you think what do you mean oh my god stop defending this guy <laughs> I'm not defending. I'm asking. The <laughs> I don't know. I haven't even. Success. Oh my god! <laughs> making right. money is one success. Making a bunch of money does not make you happy. Like they, we learn this. Like, come on, guys. No, but but you're already happy. Makes it fun. A nice car makes you happy. But if you're already happy, it makes it a whole lot funner. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Jeffrey. Yeah, he doesn't have near some of that testosterone cash. coming out of you. Let some of that. What's up with that neck, Jeffrey? You got a bobblehead going vegan, on right bro. there. You all right? I'm vegan. I'm we're, we're naturally high testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, uh, 
Vegas <laughs> has the worst timing. Uh, Speaking of second look, time. Jeff is so jelly. Really, what am I jelly about? I did what Andrew Tate's been doing. What I did what Andrew Tate's doing now for fifteen fucking years. What would I be jelly about? And I said, and I still, I guarantee, after he does what he's been doing as long as I did, he's not gonna look, look as good or be as held together as I am, at least fucking uh, mentally. Because most Jeff, people who fall from where I came from fucking commit suicide and shit. Getting, Jeff, like, you like leaving, leaving bands and stuff like that. Like dudes like drink themselves to death or do drugs or jump off bridges when they aren't rock stars anymore. And, you know, I was just on to the next thing. Like life is dope. Like, you know, like, I, I don't know. Like I've always just i just i don't know i don't i just i don't look at look towards other dudes to get all this fucking inspiration you know and especially dudes that are like uber fucking materialistic like i just that 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 is just you lose me once you start talking about that stuff that's for sure because all that shit is bullshit and all right, just let me ask you this jeffrey literally let me ask you this, from, from you jeffrey <laughs> let me ask you this <laughs> What if, remember I said, I want to invest in gold and the way I want to do it is I want to get a Cuban link chain to trigger all the slaves and I'm only going to wear it for a broadcast and then throw it back in the corner of the room. What if I decide to walk around with a big gold chain on, which is my investment in gold uh, and wear it for broadcasting purposes to tr trigger slaves to pimp and mac on them and get in their emotions? Are you going to say that I'm an agent and I'm materialistic? I yeah a Cuban link no <laughs> like yeah like a big gold. link chain because then you could take the links off one at a time and then melt okay. them down and you no, can use I, them I, yeah it's just not it's not what I'm talking about this dude is that's not what this dude is talking about this dude is talking about having a bunch of supercars and that that equaling happiness no. Oh, I'm stumped. Since someone said no, I'm totally stumped. I'm totally watching. I mean, you, you, you yourself are self admitted. You self admitted that you haven't watched much of his videos. Huh? You selfly admitted that you haven't watched much of Andrew J's videos. So how are you making an opinion on lack of knowledge? He is a duplicate of of someone else of of ten other people that they've that, that have been pushed into the mainstream over what history. Her, what purpose he's is he serving? Got, you know, Tucker Max. What purpose? Like, remember the movie Tucker Max? Like he's a Tucker Max. No, he's, he's a little not. bit with Tucker Max was rude and crude. It's not like what's his end game? What's his what's his what's purpose? End purpose to do right and uh, to do will God. Disinformation and continuing the mainstream bullshit fucking dialogue of big government. There's not what I see. I, I don't really... Yeah, you love the guy. You think he's inspirational and shit. I don't. Well, no, he's all about doing... He's not, he talks about all the righteousness and about living for God. Nobody oh, else. Oh, boy. I thought you said he's Muslim and you don't believe in that stuff. No, I didn't say I didn't believe in... I believe in everything. I, I'm, I'm just... I don't claim nothing of this to be a part of me. Because I'm not of this. I came from somewhere and I'm going back to there. I came here to do a job and I'm going back to where I came from. Do you donate to, to, to Tate? Donate to Tate? Why would I donate to the risk man? He needs why, to donate. Why, why wouldn't you? Oh, you mean a $50 a month bit club? <laughs> no, just anything. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, I yeah, someone's asking, do you think you're more inspirational than Andy Tate? <laughs> uh, well, I don't have a, a body of content out like Taint does, but uh, <laughs> yeah, if you look at my YouTube, I think there's plenty of inspirational stuff like out, out, that's way, you know, that isn't telling people to fucking buy more supercars and fucking stupid shit. Like, but is that? But what do the kids like? What do the kids like? I don't know what that. What you mean by that question? Say so he's a good influence on the children that he's are actually coming. My 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 thirteen year old kid, Andrew Tate, is the worst fucking inspiration for my thirteen year old kid. How is that when he's talking about living for God? He's he's training people to be more materialistic and to fall in line with all of the statist bullshit. 
how is that inspirational or something that we should be teaching children? Just because he said some a few things that might be interesting and might help a child or a kid growing up, it doesn't mean that he's what? this this eternally like like a, a wise dude that everyone should fucking like. He's celebrate. telling them stop being a part of the matrix, stop being a slave, stop working nine yeah, to five, go make your own business, go make your own way. I like, mean, how even, is this stuff interesting to you now? I'm so sick of hearing shit like this. It's like all this, like, tw- you know, shit from 2011, like 2010, way long time ago. Like, this is not <laughs> mind blowing. <laughs> and, Jeff, and how many gallons of gas do you think? Oh Jeff, how many God, gallons so of gas do you think are used to every year to, to deliver soybeans across the nation and the world? <laughs> soybeans, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> How much well, gas you know, and how I, much pla- how much plane fuel do you think they use to transport soybeans around the world? Eighty percent of soybeans that are grown get fed to cattle. Is anti anti Andrew Tate anti soybean? No, I think he's a promoter. Yeah, I think he sells. Really? I, I, I sell actually, I actually went to go search for really? Andrew Tate, and I wrote in Andrew Tate by accident. <laughs> <laughs> what you do? I went to go search on the search engine Andrew oh. Tate because I wanted a picture of him, but I wrote in Tate. Oh, by accident. It was in my head. I was. I had Tate on the brain. <laughs> Taint that something. Jeffrey, Andy's smiling at you. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, Paul. Yeah, look at like your brothers. That's why you're so mad at him. That your brother Jeffrey didn't fucking cut you out Jeffrey the wheel. Jeffrey Tate. That's the <laughs> thing. Your head a more. strange. He's a strange from the no, family. No, pop your head to the side a little more. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Turn your head sideways a little more. The other way. The other way. Yeah. No, the other way. Yeah. Look down. <laughs> there you go, right there. <laughs> There you go. There you, you guys you got dead it. on, bro. <laughs> 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 That's it. <laughs> Jeffrey Tate. <laughs> I'm not scary. Hi, <laughs> oh, hey Paul. Oh, I think Tommy was coming up to uh, uh, defend you the other day. Uh, <laughs> When he came up, as odd as it sounds, uh, I was up working and he came and he, uh, you know, that loop of uh, t- Mr. Talcodianism was going on <laughs> and he was listening to it. And then uh, Eric came up at 3.30, said he had got up, I don't know what time zone he's in. And he goes, and it is like he, he hadn't been listening to anything. I mean, you know, that that. You've been doing that for three or four days, and it's like, where has he been? So now I realize he was over at uh, M- Moose's, you know. Commiserate. It's been, yeah, and 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 then neither one of us actually. Tommy and I were sitting. I was listening, and he goes, "Why don't you know what's going on? Uh, you know, you were like one of the main panel hey, guys. I thought, so you know, for a while." Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That was what was going on. Oh, oh my! <laughs> Holy! Holy! <laughs> Anyway, I was just, it was just one of the few times that I saw that he was Tommy actually trying, but I think you were, uh, everything was such a mess with Moose. I think he was actually coming up on good terms for once, you know, but anyway, just let you know. 
What Annie's I down there. I want to ask Annie directly, Annie, if Tank Cot, Tank Cot, I'm, I'm going out of my mind. Tank Cot. Right for everybody. Dude, Padini, since I have Padini to come on, he's written me three paragraphs about his life. <laughs> his life story. And all this shit. I'm he's like, opening up. Now, he recognizes there's power in that because I because I finally addressed him after he said that. So now he recognizes like, there's power in that. He's going to use it everywhere. <laughs> Why are you texting me all this? Like, Andy, get up here. I want to ask you directly if you would get on a plane with Andy Tate. He could Tate. replace Talcott. And I want to know if... You're not going to tell me. Yeah, that's a good I want to deal. know what would happen if you and Andy Taint on that plane. Or in the Bugatti. <laughs> the Bugatti. The Bugatti. <laughs> Say it in the, the, the Jesse Ventura voice. The Bugatti. Ooh, that shit's good. Paul, you'd have to come up in like, you know, a big four-wheel drive. when you say it. You got to say a Bugatti. It's a Bugatti. You got to drop the T. It's Bugatti. Yeah. It's a Bugatti. Yeah, that's good. I wouldn't know how he would you'd say that. To, God. <laughs> you'd have to be driving a big redneck pickup with a, you know, four-wheel jacked up, 34-inch mud tires, you know. Loud pipes. That's off, stepping off of Tate's plane. Yeah, I'd be waiting for you with a driver. Yeah, I'm just saying, O'Shea. Like, you know, Andy Taint, Brian O'Shea, Annie, something's yeah. going now on that plane. <laughs>